experience and adjust our path and ways to achieve happiness and glory. Let us listen to the people who like the good things and avoid us from doing the bad things and other things. Ya Allah, bless our life in this meeting and gathering and prevents us from harm and unfortunate events. Allahumma ja'al jama'ala hadha jama'al mahkuma wa tafarruqana min ba'ihi tafarruqan ma'asuma. Wa la taj'alin lahum ma'fina wa la ma'ala wa la man yasda'una shaqiyya wa la ma'runa wa la ma'runa. Allahumma khullana dhulumana wa la ikhwalin al-lazina sadaquna bin iman wa la taj'al fi kulubina ghindad al-lazina amanu Rabbana innaka rahufur rahim Rabbana aatina fi dunya hasana فينا آثرة الحسنة وقنا على النار صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين. Brothers and sisters, without wasting any more time, let us warmly welcome Professor Dr. Muhammad Hadi Habibi, representative of Korea of Engineering IIUM, to share his welcoming remarks. Please welcome. Starting with the honorable guest, I have here Professor Mahada and uh, my three representatives, Associate Professor Aya Yes, and also the uh, guest speakers, starting with uh, Dr. Moaz Zayn and Professor Let me just briefly introduce you to the series. Uh, uh, Dr. Mar Zayn basically is a FMS, uh, GPS 3D and T. He's a highly experienced staff and education engineer. He has more than 18 years of experience in the oil and gas industry. He is experienced in all aspects of offshore, upstream, upstream, including green and brown projects, as well as much of the fields. He is skilled in project traces for engineering design, operations maintenance, and facilities. He has managed and supervised numerous telecommunication system languages, ALA, fiber optic networks, EMR, WR, cellular communication systems, CCTV, uh, uh, network systems, access control, IPBPX, telephony, ETRS, auxiliary radio, NDB, RAGON, and cybersecurity, RTOT, Matrix. He has conducted several studies and assessments to support business requirements and pain points, such as digital initiatives and remote operation. Uh, our second speaker is Professor Bobo Mabrigo from the Department of Engineering, IOM. He has received his Bachelor degree of Science in Electrical Affairs and Geography from the way from the National and technology. In 1987, he has received his master's and PhD in electrical engineering from UTM 96 and 2000, respectively. Professor Islam is presently working as a professor in the XC department at IOM. He has published more than 300 research papers, national and international journals and conferences. He has produced more than 20 PhD students, master's students, has completed the who has completed their postgraduate under his supervision and post supervision. He has also supervised several research projects to overcome the effects of haze, rain, dust, and fog of three space objects and high frequency wave propagation, KUPE and P bands, and hybrid of water. He is also a life member, fellow of the Institute of Engineers Bangladesh, and a senior member of the IAC. So, with this, I'd like to invite everybody to our meeting. And I hope you have a good time and enjoy the presentation of the students. Thank you, Professor Hadi, for the wonderful speech and introduction as well. Next, with great honor, I would like to invite the representative of Kaijikuli, Associate Professor at IPS Dr. Emilia Lady Kamardi, to deliver her remarks. Please welcome. Good morning to my work at you and very good morning to uh, all the participants. So uh, I would like to thank to the uh, special from the Health Engineering IIUM. 
uh, and our distinguished speakers, uh, Mr. Moans, as well as from the people of IBM itself. So today uh, we'll be uh, uh, second. So today, uh, so I am the representative from IBM. It's a, a subsection and the IBMC uh chapter this a chapter so uh as you can see uh, from the projected uh, slide uh today is the second event of time to make speech that we have a repose and i again which uh we have and the next uh uh event uh in may as well as in uh, August for the MDW and finally in October. So feel free to browse our website and you can register a uh, participate in any of the event as participant as well as the speakers. So uh, with that, uh, I let to hand back uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kenny. It's fine. As we transition to the token of appreciation session, I will like to invite Professor Dr. Prayashivili Amada to present a token of appreciation from IEEE to Kuliah of Engineering. Simultaneously, I would like to extend the invitation to Professor Dr. Hadi Habibi to receive this talk on behalf of the year. Thank you, Dr. Kenny. Thank you, Dr. Hadi. 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 Thank you, Dr. Next, I would like to request. And next, I would like to request Robbie Amada to present open appreciation to both of our honorable speakers for today. Let's see. We would like. <laughs> nice to meet you guys from ID to present the token of the session to I Triple E. No problem, I don't Nah, the speaker lepas lepas tu. Orang tua. Dua dua. Prof yang mana dengan Prof Adi bagi kat speaker saya. Okay. Thank you. Oh okay, alright. Sorry for the confusion. Next, I would like to ask both Prof Adi and Prof Yamada to present token of appreciation to both of our Arab speakers for today. Yes, <laughs> Next, I would like to welcome Professor Dr. Amir Abidul Islam from Aga UM.
Thank you, Prof. Hadi, Prof. Yamada, and Prof. Grafiko. Thank you, Mr. Mas. Mr. Mas, can say from Petronas DBS to MP. Thank you, Mr. Mas. Next, I would like to welcome Professor Rasa Emilia Bibi Islam from IUM. Thank you, Prof. Rafiko and Prof. Yamada. With that, we conclude our token of appreciation session and opening ceremony for today. Dear brothers and sisters, without further ado, I am pleased to invite Mr. Muaz Enzing to share his insights on the topic Swelling 5G, how 5G unlocks digital acceleration for the oil and gas industry. This one.
Okay. Um, thank you very much uh, for the invitation uh, for today's session. Um, so as uh, it's was before, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm back. Yeah. Um, as I uh, mentioned before, as mentioned before, um, uh, staff telecommunication in India for the staff is basically the um, I am telling for technical and technical for the So I always uh, provide a technical expertise and consultation uh, and advice for projects. So uh, for Petronas, uh, as last year, Petronas has been, uh, we have launched our private uh, 5G network. Uh, it was launched by uh, DPMS, DPM, Dr. Fadila. He was the one who launched Petronas, uh, Petronas uh, 5G, officially, officially 5G. But our journey to, to, de to deploy private 5G network of Petronas has been ongoing since um, my my was uh, and was has been involved with has been involved with uh, working group. I am uh, the agency since two thousand eighteen. For what we saw was that when body was deployed, it was totally in uh, in team base. So for us. We realized there's, there's uh, some, some challenges there. So what we, what we saw was that we need to be involved in, in, uh, in the early stages, even before 5G was deployed. So that was my my, uh, my crazy bird was involved in the group, which is working group from 2018. And then until now, and then 2020, deployed and applied the test plan. Uh, Instead, instead of so during the KP, so I was very very important. The KP, the highway was clear. Really, the KP was was a lot in the So then, uh, that's for to show that our five G industry, industry, is very recognized. But for industrial base, five G is required to to consider. In that time, there was no uh, WN or DWN. Really, like, at that time, there's uh, FMC is still just discussed whether the FMC can be given to the private or the uh, other SSTD, the vehicle to carry that. And ultimately, they come up with the DMP. DMP is then coming to the other DMP. Okay, so from there, we have deployed IMG. In instead of the day after, we install in Malacca. Then last year, we installed in three locations. Three locations. And then this year will be seven. Okay. So uh, my, my, my sharing today, basically more on sharing, the, the firstly I will share on our, on our telecommunication if uh, using Petronas, and then Go specifically to IT and how we uh, utilize it and plan to be utilized. Okay. I think uh, in terms of uh, general, uh, the technical application in the uh, uh, industry, especially where we are located in the shop, as well as the uh, uh, plant environment, then the challenges and the requirements. Then the various uh, technologies, especially the remote we plan in our language. And then uh, use case now, Petra especially is working in a remote vision and monitoring and control. And by the platform is the operators are located remotely onshore. But the plan is offshore, uh, mm -hmm. the plan or uh, uh, platform offshore, mm -hmm. but the, the, the operator is offshore. And, mm -hmm. uh, this combined is integrated and so several platforms to find this computer integration. So we are looking at that, then uh just deployment already, but of course uh, in stages they will add more platforms. Then the trends and uh, especially on the case studies that implemented and we plan to implement, especially to to use uh 5G technology. So that's where the setting 
So we have the 5G, how, how do we go about it? How do we move forward with the infra we have? Telecom, I think it's the same information, just definition of it. I think everybody's super with this. Okay. okay, for special power and gas, required for coordination, for operational coordination, especially for safety emergency. So for for telecom, when it's there, nobody, if it's working okay, everybody forgot about it. Nobody look for us. Once it's down, everybody help. Where my telecom? Otherwise, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, We don't. People do, do unaware. Okay, a remote monitoring controls. So this is the real time monitoring between the transmission from shore, uh, from a uh, integrated location. So when you have integrated location, then you can easily bring in experts, experts to that location instead of going offshore which is limited in many to go there, you need to go for training, for offshore training. So there's a lot of obstacles before you need to go to offshore, for example. So if you have a localized area, control, unified integrated control, then it's you to bring in all the other experts without any additional obstacle. Efficient level machine, so this, uh, especially on the example or wells, whenever they, they, they the real words they need the data in time. And for even for improvement of operation movement, it was only data. Only now, especially the before this, there's already prescriptive maintenance, predictive maintenance, everything is already in place. But maybe they cannot fully utilize it because the data itself is structured, is uh, it's not digitalized, is here and then. So so that's that's the need to bring it back. Okay. So this so the main enabler, the key enabler for, for this is the commission infrastructure itself. And then uh commission page sharing, similar to what I mentioned before, so easier for for, for now we have um company uh, which will be a hand hand mounted emblem okay, where, so that when you uh, you have uh, the they put in that's my file and it's for us to get the more experience. Everything we do is the okay. Okay, these are some main one we uh, especially for, for us uh, in the industry, we mostly look at the application wise. Application wise for researchers more on how to improve the activity server. So we focus more on the um, design of it to, to apply, apply for it. So these are some of the key requirements that we look for. See, that uh, really 99.9% uh, 99 or 99.9%. So just you know, you need to look at how many downtime per year. Okay, reliability, how reliable is it? So when we need to have a redundant link, Single is sufficient, and the coverage is down. Coverage could be from end to end for onshore to offshore, or locally on the platform itself or in the panels. Okay, so there's several for, for the for for end point to point. There's several uh, energies that I will share later, and then for plasma uh, or local, typically not usually we have Wi-Fi, right? But Wi-Fi is very limited. Maybe 50 meter radius, and then if there's metal, there's there's a uh, blockage, mm -hmm. and even for 4G, 4G, we already have 4G. Some uh, in our production law, we already have 4G. The uh, the data rate, well, I think 20 meg, 20 meg, which is okay lah, good enough for someone lah. But if we 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 are going, we're looking to the future, we have more IOTs to have a higher density of uh, equipment. Then we need uh, a bigger uh, uh, infra that support them. So that's where we see 5G can be able to, to support them. And latency. Latency um, is important in terms of uh, safety. Safety. So from when, whenever the operator push the button, the shutdown button, so we need to have a boost immediate or hitless 
Usually, sometimes it will be saying less uh, below 250 milliseconds. Yes. It's for far away, it's apart from using satellite, uh, everything could be okay. But really, it's not the for itself, it's the computing of the switcher that is easy. And then we are see. So, this, especially for the appointment of remote, then we require this. Uh, the galaxy uh, is, 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 is becomes more, more, more important because if you are remotely putting it, this the, the link is down. How, how do you go about it? So you want the the so it's related to the ability availability. So you want uh, as much as uh, high availability as possible, and then see will see Okay, it is just a general overview of. Or I guess upstream, upstream usually the the platforms. The midstream is uh, the receiving facilities and cooling facilities, and then the downstream is the one that produces the, the product or, or material for products. Actually, petroleum and such. Okay, it is just uh, this uh, complex. If you can see, so I use this one slide. Okay, so this is typical. Uh, so this is a complex, and then we have a line on the right side. Uh, in Malaysia, in this complex in Malaysia, in terms of uh, platforms, there's several uh, because we have been uh, since 1984, right? Before, yes, before. So there's platform before this is doing many things. <coughs> then there's big platform and complex. There's uh, in many types of, of platforms now requirement. If you have the opportunity, then try last last uh, last year I brought um uh, lectures researchers and uh, to our we have a platform in Naudam uh, that's a DFT. Uh, DFT uh, we will we look at it uh, in the uh, slides. So I brought them there. So you should usually to go to Ottawa, you need to, to go to training. You need to, there's a in helicopter train, you have to, that's a lama, basically, right? Go set, yes, you go set. So, but for, for this particular one, uh, there's for research, they can, um, some, we uh, can, can, you know, because it's fine. So, but that's, that's the, so last last time we bought, we bought over the intention measures around five people. So, it's a good opportunity. <laughs> we have the experience <laughs> okay. You want to go? <laughs> <laughs> so this is as well. So we have uh, our, our, but not all platform has towers. So it's always easy for. Okay. Okay. Unique challenges uh, when we want to deploy uh, telecom uh, if equipment. Uh, equipment. One is a uh, harsh environment. So it's supposed to, especially for offshore, offshore is supposed to the salty seas. So corrosion, so we need the, the material of the equipment is always this and this time there. And then it sends, it sends far. So this will, will determine your, our design. What type of bedroom is going to be going to use? Uh, limited space. Uh, in space, uh, because offshore is platform, any space you increase more steel, more cost. And that's why we need to design uh, to be economical so that the project can fly. So, space is a community, safety and security, especially in the Sarawak region where China, uh, China send their, their, their ships. To harass our our ships, to harass our food reform. So so that's that's an issue of that as well. But luckily we don't have issue on pirate lah. There's no issue on pirate. Sure. No pirates. Yes, a lot of fishermen come to to uh, to fish nearby the platform because platform has 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 a funny cat. So in terms of safety, so apart from the bamboo communication, bamboo disrupt, there's CTV. Uh, uh, radar, so that one also again the enabler for that is telecom itself to bring back maintenance repairs is not easy 
So any work to be done offshore, usually uh, if you, you, you do in in, in, in so it's this cost, but in offshore times the cost will be times nine, times sixteen, times twenty seven of the cost. So everything needs to be to be to be reliable and climate uh, friendly. And then regulatory compliance in terms of especially in terms of exclusions. So uh, so on the right side, I see ICDS, FX, those are the, the standards that's followed to, to determine your agreement to be exclusion proof. And then energy efficiency. Similar to space, offshore platform is also limited power, especially the small ones, the warehouse. So usually where is is small, so they don't put turbine, they use a solar panel. So I know it's, it's, it's limited. It's limited right? And then uh, and then the other issue is that for telecommunication infra is usually designed for uh, in terms of oil and gas, it's very small in terms of uh, in terms of sales market. In terms of market of offshore is very small. So the mm -hmm. the supplier, the manufacturer usually will more focus on Telcos. Telcos is a bigger, is a bigger. Yes, uh, yes. For example, 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 so there's a workaround, but that's the one of the challenges in design. Okay. Okay. So just I uh, just want to share the general. I will usually I like to use the for onshore is quite simple fiber etc. But onshore the issue is on. Uh, Plan itself, uh, I saw the human plan for last month, but for 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 sure, we need for people. Okay. So in our people, uh, the technology that uh, we usually deploy in in uh, oil and gas, uh, fiber, subsea fiber, uh, digital micro video, so fiber optic. Okay, I will share later. Troposcatter system. Uh, Troposcatter is not it's not uh, common. It's not com it's not common. And then the uh, I'm not sure whether some of oil and gas it is used. Is it used by non oil and gas for the post system? Not sure. As I understand this, as I do that, maybe I'm so this uh, I will share on the details bit. Then satellite system. Okay, for fiber optic. So we have high mobility, long, long distance. Uh, the the farthest for Petronas, even in Malaysia, actually, for Malaysia, or I guess, is 200 kilometers. 200 kilometers uh, distance. There is a limit. OK. Uh, so, uh, the cost for offshore is actually, the material itself is not that expensive, but the more expensive portion is on the uh, solution portion. So because we need uh, barge. So when, Everything's when everything going offshore, then cost suddenly will balloon up, and then when it's for oil and gas, another <laughs> another premium. Okay, and luckily for me, I had the opportunity to install this two hundred fifty meters subsidy. Mm -hmm. Actually, one eighty to one eighty, and then another one twenty, another eighty. So I was on the watch for one month, and one month install show and so on. So. Only, uh, very fortunate uh, to have this opportunity to be work with. This is a part of the project. It's one of the, the infrared we install is this. So, see if I to understand this way. Okay. And the contact itself is a Malaysian company. So, we have that, but in Malaysia, I think they are the only one. But there are some other companies will be in the Okay, uh, so in terms of design, subsidy also the, the fiber itself is different from the onshore one. So there's uh, many challenges. Okay, and behind, sorry, behind it is uh, this from 
que Jaime y Natalia de la Monsuala, y como este mira, tengo ahí. Okay, the other one is my post video, the German video. So for our case, for offshore, we use uh, 7 gigahertz. 7 gigahertz. For telcos, I rent this, they use the uh, unlimited rate for this 18 gigahertz before 500. Uh, the issue is, and if we, we have a frequency above 10 gigahertz, we are affected by, by rain, we don't press. Mm -hmm. so, right. That's why for offshore, the have a uh, stay uh, question at the time and uh, in the Before this, but during the 90s, uh, it's on 2K. But FMC wants uh, better to put uh, relocate that. You see, this is used for the ISM man. So this move to 70 years. Now we're using 70 years. Uh, the, usually, the, the DMR is using from a form to well, reform, so for reform to offshore. The farthest we have for DMR is for Batanasan. For Batanas is in Trinidad, 120 kilometers. For Peter Long, that's not reform. So both have thousands and thousands. So otherwise, we can pass the traffic convention. Okay. Um, yeah, that's all for the convention. And then troposcopic system. Troposcopic system basically is, is used. It, is, it can go far more than 200 meters away, even 500 meters. So it's using um, it's using scattering from the ion in that. But the the percentage of scattering is very low. It's only 10 percent. 10 percent. You scatter back only 10 percent. So. Uh, so, so, for, so to order to, to get the, the, the bandwidth, at least the usable bandwidth, so you need to send a lot of signal. Yeah, so if if we, if we want 100 meg, for example, then we send maybe one gig of of, of signal ratio, for example, like that to, to receive the, and so so based on that, you can see that it's gonna consume a lot of power. Then you're gonna have a big uh, antenna. And then uh, we have uh, usually we have to cater for the diversity, right? So high power consumption, um, availability is low, and only recently the modem uh, can cater for up to two hundred megabits. Before this, only twenty meg. So for all this, all this about high power uh, space itself, of, uh, I mentioned before limited space, but still because you need that that, that backbone, then. Uh, space power or from the reform itself, so there's several uh, several limitations to use it. There are obstacles to use it, but because of the distance, it cannot be covered by by EMR. But to not wants to be cheaper than uh, fiber, then the video ground is. And the thing is, in the, in the market, there's only one single provider. Before this, is, before this is two, before this is two. So contact it, this is the other one, so there's no one. So if only one, in terms of uh, when you want to deploy, uh, Petronas is very small, huh? the market base. So to get service, maybe it's might as well they deploy their service in India to somewhere else. So that's the challenge to assess that. So uh, this scatter is typically used uh, by US. So we use, use this. Uh, this is this is this can go far go far as long as you can shoot up. Yeah. So you can easily overcome the the picture. Uh, so that's the challenge, but but uh, and then we design it as well. If you for micro video, you can use uh passwords, you can use all you can use the existing uh, in the market software, right? But for topos scatter, because it's uh, proprietary, it's only single single for very market. So even us we don't we, we have the, the software. Check. So when we deploy them, you can just check up to six and lah. The rest is this is uh, contact on uh, only discussion. So we partially we give China instead of um, we can check by our own can check. So that's uh, the challenge. Uh, so we have installed this one. We have installed in uh, this one. 
So shell shell likes to use yeah, we we prefer the DM so it's it's point to point, it's point to point. Uh relatively easy to support. Well, so I'm always getting I'm all over in it. So so the the then we put the post character on the dial in our our footing footing and then so uh yeah. Okay. Then uh, with that, uh, the direct point to point, but this is uh, quite expensive. It's expensive in terms of time limit because yeah, you need to, to subscribe for from the satellite, right? Submitted then with the satellite. So this uh, availability is, is low. Then you suffer from sun outages uh, every twice. A, I mean, uh, twice a year, the satellite will be in front of sun, which will trigger uh, uh downtime but for one month maybe the the for one month the outages will be like five minutes per day you know? but that five minutes is when you add up then uh, it's a lot like so we cannot get uh high but the 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 the, the, the pro of uh reset is easy to deploy yes uh, pro bring us up it is easy to run uh, this one for some point to the sky and voila set and quite easy <laughs> quite easy so so that's the point so these are the, the things that we need to consider then the newest one is the new satellite and the newest one is starting starting so where now we install uh, this starting in several of our locations um even easier to deploy than than the side actually. Even the 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 the, 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 the antenna is simple. Just uh, put there and easily they can. Because we have many satellites, so we don't really need to have a body. But we said we need to find the satellite yeah, like guy. But for flight for Sally, just well, the pipe will go out. Okay. Uh, but the issue is with Starlink in Malaysia because they are using uh event. Event twenty four years. So the sharing is less so so for enterprise news for you can be in a spinal to use as a for our remote operation and everything else is is that can be an output of that or new okay I throw no let it and see what you can see that uh we can much much lower than that number we send but but for we said this said they can uh provide they can send it I think the opinion is actually deployed for the small base. Even then, it's actually, I don't think it's actually deployed for the I think it's actually deployed for Tesla and the And the other thing is spawned there. As well, as well, the habitual, the bit, 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 the I mean, this does it working global up in the deployment world in our world. Uh, we deploy experience play a big role. All and yes, it's actually a very conservative industry. So anything that comes in, it needs to be uh, approved. 
two of our new type experience. If you want to bring in a new one, you need to do uh, POC. And that's why we do the test bed. So test bed too, we improve case case scan. So in terms of our process, not there. Process, you can see how this is case case scan. Then, okay. So it's not really just. Yes. So for POC, it's okay. Uh, but to actually deploy, there's a. Uh, First, ever said this before we can use it. Okay. Um, but yes, key enabler for it. Okay. Next. Okay, I think people have uh, this is uh, triangle is very familiar to everybody. Lah. And EMBB, ULC, EMTC. But for now, we want EMBB. For EMTC, still not. Uh, 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 yeah, like and then it coming uh, on a 5G racket, 5G reduced capability, uh, where uh, when we use uh, deployed 5G, even when using our phone, the main uh, cause for disadvantage is for this high power consumption. You know, you get 1 gig, uh, 500 meg, a lot. Ready? High bandwidth, but in fact, in practical, we only use maybe 30 mic, right? Even video alone, what for? Demo mic, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, in that way, the user experience with which the as opposed to use 4G. And yeah. I think that's why, in my opinion, that's why it's reduced, that can be introduced in the middle. And that one, we saw wrong, maybe next year, or next year, or next year, maybe a little. Okay, and then uh, even MBLT supposedly can use the same IFA, right? If I think it's a much for people, it's not there. I'm not sure why the share is possible. MBLT. So, MBLT. Uh, yes. So, apart from 5G, as I mentioned before, so we are also looking at um, uh, deploying IoT. So, we're going to deploy IoT, then we look at several uh, protocols with IoT. Lah. Even I some 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 C Fox C Fox that took a diagram. What is it? Right, it took a diagram. C Fox, let's take it right. I think it took a diagram. Uh, so we so we will try to deploy five G. So supposedly within the five G, there is no way. But in Malaysia, we don't. In terms of still getting discussion. But even even in the team, for the good was not they were deployed and the telco was not nah, promote that. So, uh, I'm not sure why I was there because there's an opportunity for there for, for even for better nice to deploy IoT. Okay. Yes. So, Okay, um, so, okay, so now I'm just sharing in terms of uh, overall pain points in terms of connectivity that are faced by our business. Huh? Okay, one, uh, limited network connectivity, in, especially in the process area. The process area, even though there's a public private uh, 4G bone, public public 4G bone, sometimes that's uh, sampai. The people did and put our work at war. Then there's no fight, right? The top is so we don't have that, that connectivity. And then, not all, uh, uh, for example, on show location, this is have a fiber to all the all the field, field, or should we feel, or should we room? And then, like, I love it, you know, the consultation, that's more disconnected, and it's trying to be connected to square the initial design. Okay. The prime one second level only. So this is quite special in your implementation of the share. And then you apply data collection, the limited coverage for voice communication. This is not directly related. It, it, it helps in terms of uh, digital when you know this is uh, in the tangential of your application. Limited visual monitoring coverage, people tracking productivity monitoring. Okay, the first one is on the 
kita nak guna metric soil measure so at farm building to see whether the plants that is designed in, in Malaysia is actually even before uh, even before all those uh, internet everything need to be uh, connected to internet to so there was no use case back then people are not thinking okay, as long as people can go there then it's okay but now everything is connected people's station have smartphone before then there's even there's no smartphone to just just place name on the city there there's no there's no need for internet in the first place and even edge or gps uh, in them is not good enough to, to deploy so now once uh, once uh, the invention of smartphone then everybody needs uh, connectivity so to, to to provide connection to this uh, subsession typically we need a wire connector copper is too far so use fiber and fiber for a uh, it's life plan it's life plan it's not easy it's easy you need to get a lot of uh, it's complex a lot of tools there even then you are not proof because it's for the pine so it's not easy so uh, what we use is we know it's very fiber but we need to the 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 bandwidth is big like if 4G can be in overall response, so one key, so then you can deploy more of this, uh, uh, extend the, the, the connectivity of this. So, what we do is, I like to use uh, 5G as FID instead of physical fiber, it's 5G as FID. Okay, okay, this is typical. Typical, we need to connect fiber optic from, from uh, the subsection fiber reading to the nearest. Uh, never point, never point. So we need to find them. So this is a complex, especially we call as this plan we call brownfield. If a new facility we call greenfield. We brownfield life plan is very high. So what we do is we introduce when we provide five G, then we we introduce um, we have fiber. Yeah, so. mm. No, I did no. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. The branding really it's not it's not it's not fiber in terms of uh, branding <laughs> it's not branding it's not uh, confessible the fight fighting it is actually fighting is not the fiber is just my 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 term lah now instead of physical fiber okay for the punya station paling jauh so kita jauh eh kilometer 1 kilometer 1 kilometer apa ya 1 kilometer okay even even now in the market i don't think guys i asked around lah ni kita mau free kita bibi kita punya ID punya ring kita Ya, so kita ni tak pasti di sini tapi kita tak ni 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 itu jadi sertifikat ya dari sahaja okay so basically what what we do is instead of sorry instead of physical fiber ni Okay, is it set of physical fiber to provide uh, Wi-Fi kadang kapital? Then we use uh, 5G FMA. 5G FMA uh, connect. Over. So this become the fiber FMA. So so it's 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 then. Okay, the fiber is IG. So this uh, expression proof, FWA, or sometimes you also call it a CPE, that's a big human, so go by this. Okay, so yang ni, so uh, satu, one is to, to one is to provide connectivity inside the file. Once kita guna 5G ni untuk untuk collect, to collect the, to connect to the 
network enterprise network dan si deploy access point dalam 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 uh, file building kita lah session but similar form similar ni kita juga guna dia sebagai fokus kepada uh, room AP before this you need to connect the room AP to this formatting for formatting so for formatting you will this you need to have the root AP will connect by cable to the nearest network switch. Typically. Typically. So this fiber in the medium case that that some switch is negative. So fiber that are from the far building to the nearest network switch in the center could be one kilometer. Two kilometers. So very complex. Thank you so much for this time. So this is the link to the Okay. Okay. Yang ni ni, oh sorry. Yang ni dah masuk more on the show. So, so, okay. So for offshore, for offshore, for back phone, cabaran dia punya tengok. Design dia tengok. Which is what type of energy is being used. So for activity that type of. Tapi, on the platform itself, Provide right, coverage on the platform itself is actually quite a little bit easier. But what I mean, it's a more digital than it is. Again, they would fit for uh, enterprise and work at a long telecom. So, then I have some Wi Fi at the process area. They just like him, only tell him about the the ability that they. Ah, so kita cari yang kembali lagi. Tapi kalau on show, dia tak tak mesti dia berjalan raya, berjalan juga tak boleh. Tapi di same time, on show dia, see, they have already deployed four uh, G, and sekarang ni lagi nak tengah pasang five G, tapi ada C, ada C tu pun. Dia pasang dan dan fortunately the the dia pasang lagi atas, jadi that that ini. That signal only pass forward. Although there's a lot of a lot of metal. So in the okay, so then they pass on a decision at the sea, and the rail at the sea. The point up there, ah, the tower. Tapi, tapi dia sebenarnya hari dia kita ada pasang tinggi lah. So, apa yang dia sudah pasang, dia pasang uh, the, 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 the ram, the ram ni antena. Satu sebelah sini, satu sebelah sana, satu dia ada spacing down words lah. Down words. So, luckily, walaupun nampak ni banyak pipe, banyak pipe dan sebagainya. Even sampai kat some deck, dia sampai lah. Tak boleh di kebawah ni pun, they can still get this. Can we see? Yeah, can can we see? Can we see? The the five G, this one, four G. Four G. Five G. They want to come pass on again. Okay. But yeah, but. Sky is four G. Four hundred. It's it's centralized. Four hundred. 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 Ini, uh, so pasang ram, ram tu tembak dalam platform, dan they say lepas dapat. Otherwise, dia dua cara. Nah, 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 Ini ke proses dia dalam dalam yang ni bangunan ni, dia nampak itu dua antena tu. Ini kan? Ini yang bawah ni ni agak ni adalah ni hipotes. Yang ni hipotes ni. Oh, so ni dalam ni tak ada masalah boleh pasang wifi senang lah. Pasang wifi CCTV, but yang ni tak luar Tak luar ni, typically tak ada kerja. So, dua cara. Satu adalah dia tarik, pasang wifi uh, pasang uh, wifi access point for each level. Each level, tapi dia kena tarik kabel. Tapi, let's see dia lagi. We can sell you out. Kita je lagi. So, dia tarik. Tarik, tapi dia tarik kabel lah. Tapi dia tarik kabel. Kabel tarik dia tak ada. So, dia tarik kabel tarik kabel. Jadi easy lah. Kalau onshore, kena koyak tanah. So, 
Itu nah, satu. Satu, tapi CIS FIP, dia punya coverage yang sangat kita test, paling jauh pun kalau dalam 50 meter radius. Tapi kalau kat ni, takut lagi tanpa alat. So what they do is, every guy akan letak dulu. Biasanya kalau perform ni ada yang lepas. Jadi dia, itu satu. Tapi kita tengok. Dan lagi kita tengok dia lah. Ha, 4G, 4G punya RAM itself. 4G punya RAM tu, eh, dah pasang ke offshore ni, dah pasang 20. Itu location, itu platform lah. So, dia guna kata lepas. Lep, uh, main 4G ni lepas. Kita lah, kita lah. Pipe, pipe, pipe. Kan kita nampak tebal ni kan? Dia punya lantai ni, uh, di bawah platform, sub platform pakai gracing. Dia tinggi sikit dia ada lupa. Sub platform, long play. So, yang play tu, ambil tu. Saya kena ada gracing yang kereta ini, saya kena lepas. Kita tahu lah, air tak tak fully check. Air sini tak fully check, mereka kata lepas. So, buat air ini. Itu lah. Itu 4G. Sekarang dia orang start dengan 5G juga. 5G, I'm not sure. Lepas lah. Lepas lah. No, yet. No, yet. 4G lah. 4G lah. The nearby, nearby gas station from the option. Apa dia? Tak tak. Memang kita pasang. Is it coming from the satellite? The signals? Is it coming from the onshore? Or not officially? Must be signal. Okay, what's that? Is it coming from the... Yeah, you're talking about the MIT thing, right? Okay, so... This is the first portion of my sharing today. Allow on the very good. So, when you have to take on it, yang ni ni, macam video ni akan tembak ke darat. So, darat, cok. Tembak ke darat, daripada paling jauh. Paling jauh, yang ni kena satu. Ini daripada tahu, daripada, tapi satu atas kat telefon ni atas tahu. Okay, then the other side, tahu atas mungkin. So, we need to get over the curvature of the Ya, yes. memang kita di sini dulu. Anis, okay, di banyak. So macam yang kita tadi, all all the four type of the variable infrared kita guna, kita guna semua depend on location. So kalau uh, yang katakan tu, memang sebab ada bukit, jadi jadi berbalik. Kita kan dengan dia, sama pun uh, ada bukit dia lah. Kita tumpang tower. Ada macam mana nak tahu telekom, tahu bisnis, saya tahu dia dan mungkin tembak ke platform. Kalau kita tahu safety, yang penting adalah Oh, it's okay, most communication So, biasanya Plant, left of the floor Dia ada kapal So, kalau for emergency, dia pernah nak Atau what type of emergency Kalau plant from shutdown, just, it's just Tak ada, tak ada orang kerja Dia bukan safety, pressure safety So, dia just, dia to figure out So, benda tu dia Dia, apa ni? Dia That one is between the, kita panggil DCS Google Code System ataupun uh, PMCS, kita orang panggil PMCS, proses, proses monetary to system. So benda tu dia, dia connect antara PMCS tu ke, ke network. Itu so, network PCS, bukan, bukan, uh, bukan network. I was thinking that you use the satellite phone. Satellite phone sometimes ada dekat, ada, ada dekat. Tapi tu, depends on the time, dia akan 
apa post publication for yeah dia biasanya dia ada mission dikatakan dia akan mungkin kena otaki bagi otaki pun otaki ataupun yang fix video fix video boleh jauh betul betul dia betul betul ya dia pun dia kena success dia dia video jadi tapi tak semua dia fix video at least kebenaran so in that sense you can think that that's often that's the way to one maybe pirate the one kan pirate you can drop off that start down the sphere Begini sikit, begini Whatever it is Ya lah In that point, you can't take that Yang ni saya tak mention that lah Mungkin more How do they have some Cable On the level on Plus to open So, to the three, of course Ada Temisian tadi dalam Bagi lepas saya CTV, Dulu tu yang super Share ini lebih kepada support perasa sisi tapi di dalam safety itself the, the dalam platform itself is, is also can stand alone tak ada permission kena lihat pun platform is safe maknanya the, the, the fire the, the process punya sistem tu dia punya internet dia dia, dia the others and then they have their own apa ni your level of of reliability and reliability standard lah the center so the portion kita panggil on uh, OT machine technology the IT so for our case ada yang saya tanya ada insyaallah on the model we are we are we are segregating the OT and IT based the quality model Level 3, level, level 1, 2, 3, TFC, 5, 4, 5, so we will take that. So for telecom portion, usually on more levels. Tapi masuk level 3, key portion, ah, they are different. Tapi untuk connect, in between, they are different. It's different. Okay, let me have a go back. Oh, oh, dalam dalam seminar sebelas pelor apa? Ya kan? Bukan? Tapi boleh lah. Bukan yes. It's okay. So, so is the so basically most of the five G kita pun untuk provide that last mile connectivity and for less last last mile punya backbone provide so to provide the connectivity for our mesh what I mesh to be the go give this okay this is the mesh lah yang yang kita pas bagi connection kat ni so ini kita all bulan-bulan kecil biru ni adalah the Ini so ini campak sebab bentuk dia pada pelan tu yang tu, waktu dia punya bermuka tu tu yang nampak kuning tu tu memang behind the, the row of hills. So kita kan banyak kan nak fiber nak fiberize benda ni. Platform berapa pun juta habis. Very complex world sebenarnya. So that's why five G punya tu unlock this dan dia boleh posit dia digital. Padahal Ya eh, tak tanya ni, ni kat itu dulu ni Onshore, onshore uh, Yang for this portion, more on onshore punya For offshore, the tennis on the backbone the Local, the last mile productivity Bagi saya easy So currently, on the 5G ni more Beneficial for onshore For offshore punya last mile productivity So, then ni kita bagi Instead of lay fiber, untuk fiber right Ah, betul Okay so nampak ni ada seratus satu dua satu dua okay okay so yang ini yang yang so tahanin not Thailand ini JT kan ada okay so yang ni special ni dia nak buat operation dia semuanya nak connect dia ada tapi Okay. 
Tapi dia require untuk stay So typically guna point to point macam radio lah So kita tengok as well Dalam pasal Fahji, kita pergi dengan Fahji sebagai Fahji It's very special case punya invitation lah So not typical Tapi and then at the same time it's also used The Fahji itself is used uh, Untuk provide connectivity dekat JT itself, JT tu panjang So JT tu walaupun ada kabel tu So nak tarik fiber sepanjang tu pun Quite costly je kan Yelah, so ni panjang kan JT ni sampai hujung Ada satu kilometer JT So JT walaupun So ni kita punya antena kita The F 700 meters on 250 700 Tapi sekarang ni for private, saya punya Saya punya So ni Animan Gen apa, Blok Naya So why do you think it's a form of Telecommunication? Telecommunication Yang yang polis kan, Telecommunication Yang 4G, Telecommunication 4G takkan ni, tak percuma lah Okay, so ni dia tembak ke darat Ni ke MRCSD sebelah tu Ini dia tembak ke darat dalam 4 kilometer 4 kilometer Jadi 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 So, quite surprising lah. I thought in the end, 4 kilometers is quite So, this is the D. So, the flame market direct sekali. But we don't really like the range. It's still. Yeah, typically anything below 10 minutes is not in the end. So, what time is the end? Anything below 10 minutes, typically, will not be in the end. Anything in the event, in the event, starling, I can't see the way again. Dia nak buat macam mana pun, nak adjust dia punya ni pun You cannot lawan pun alam lah Okay, so the time data, okay ni pun sama So we put a RT gateway lah in the middle So ni pun, actually most of these cases that's 5G as a fiber lah Different uses kita punya for that So yang ni untuk per walk stocky radio So kita nak pasang per base station for walk stocky radio kan Side lain, perlu a wide connection to dia punya switching server So, we set kita kena 5G, FI2 in between ataupun boleh uh, lakukan point to points ataupun boleh sebut uh, for reliance Okay, lagi for telefon pun sama isu telefon biasanya kopo ni uh, speaker uh, pada uh, telefon punya PBX kopo kena cari kopo sepanjang panjang low plan macam MLNG tadi tu uh, memang ni isu MLNG lah isu tadi dia kopo dah ada terbit telefon kena rosak so ni kita propose Tak pasang lagi, tapi ni pun-pun kita buat macam ni lah So maknanya akan dah ospek macam Jadi easy to deploy, fast to deploy, tak perlu kabel pun And then telefon pun kecil je, uh, kilobits Okay, CTV pun semua, similar So semua cases, so ni for offshore lah For offshore Okay, kemudian kekurangan guna cellular Cellular punya uh, energy ni lah dia perlukan core Dia perlukan core, ada wifi ke tak perlu core Just like tu kan, even never switch ke Dua ke radio pun ada dia punya Radio unit, itu je simple Tapi 5G unit, 5G core So core sebenarnya Eat up a lot of the the Itu macam mana nak nak deploy 5G So ini kita Kita buat interaksi dan Kalau nearby, kita share the same core with the nearby ini. As we have in Ketik lah, ketik kita share the same core Tak ada rent, cover lima, lima plant so the area tu dalam 2 by 2 3 by 3 km ok, ni ok, I think the final message is dalam penyelidikan yang I mentioned for, yang we use as a basis lah for all the design so for the great, the OT network and the IT network
thing the same. The beach. We would like to open the floor for only one question. And I just want to introduce and welcome to the event, Professor Dr. Oxman Omran Khalifa, the head of his department, William of Engineering and Thank you for having me. Visited, get in here. This is the problem. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to get in here. 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 I'm going to get uh, but you should do this my personal lah. I uh, understand uh, my business plan. Several discussion you got. Uh, my boss plan to make sure for 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 uh, corporation disabilities and sebagainya. Then we need to open it. Uh, discuss for it. That overlap. That are different. Punya ni. So how we swear? Like this lah. This entry ni. So to to in terms of crimes, uh, what to to play? Yeah, I think there is. Uh, to, yeah. uh, I think that's a good way because not only for the electrical side, uh, if you can have the ground, uh, it's going to be for the ESC as well, for the student as well, then I get a project for the Petrona, it's a big name, Petrona, for people and the future generation. Yeah, actually, there is a deal, because Petrona can be changed so yeah. pocket pockets of, 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 of of money adalah somewhere kita cari <laughs> tapi belum kita tu pun namanya in the first place uh, proposal come first from there kita value ni memang kita actually kita dah pasang pasang memang business the, the, the location the site yang kita dah pasang 5G ni pun dia orang tanya how do we set swap 5G kalau kita dah pasang 5G lah macam mana takkan lah mata-mata smartphone je buat apa 5G je kan how, how, how else so yang mm. saya share the I method itu takkan ni kita dapat tu lah Men challenge uh, satu uh, as, as, as of now yang nampak banyak lah kita berdua dia sebagai local punya backbone dan I mentioned dia sebagai air fiber tu then to to fully use but kat, kat market tak apa belum not yet uh, tak cukup banyak lagi in term of native IG device lah takkan ni smartphone je even mm. IoT sekalipun Need to have intermediary. So it's not that bad. So if we can uh, tunjuk, provide, apa ni, for example, oh, I, Ah, uh, okay. This is the IoT. So the second punya ni adalah this IoT even the even the market there is we have not yet find native 5G IoT device. Ada lagi. So so siapa buat dulu? Ah, okay. For example, yang sekarang ni. So yang ini IoT camera, this one is using uh, LoRaWAN eh. So kena ada LoRaWAN, LoRa gateway kat tengah. So saya tu cak, yang ini yang IoT camera kat atas ni memang that IoT camera itself is uh, ni. Tapi camera tu dia macam of course. But IoT ni kan sebetulnya operated. So uh, this is um, every every four, four hours I think dia ambil gambar. So ada ada dalam bukan dalam platform kena plan bukan semua equipment yang ada tu dia connect back to the DCS so dia monitor, they only the critical ones the rest are unconnected so every day the the operator ada daily round sekali terus kali, sekali sehari, pagi mungkin dua kali, pagi pusing tengok, ambil data 
pergi petang pergi kepada tak so bila macam tu tak tahu makan masa safety pun boleh jadi safety sebab dia fizikal kena be there dan data ditulis tu ketepatan bukan macam mana dia transfer benda tu ke, ke digital to analyze eh. so there's a lot of tu yang kembali kepada lebih data so even with the 5G ni kalau uh, bila IoT device data boleh real time ataupun uh, staggered banyak so easy, dah dah transfer pun daripada bertulis ke ni so you you determine the accuracy, determine the ability, determine the, the timing yang sampai so sekarang ni saya nampak anak pun in term of native 5G devices untuk IoT yang boleh buat macam yang contoh yang atas ni apa yang dia buat lah dia, dia separate kan, the core module kita nampak sangat ni dia punya core module Core module, so this core module connect to the sensor Yang bawah ni adalah biologi sensor Which is even better, better lah daripada yang ni integrated kan So at least bila macam ni you can provide a bigger battery uh, To last longer Kalau ini you kecil, bateri kecil Ini so that's all. So yang ni mungkin dia buat ni 5G native 5G native maksud singkat dalam this This itself, jadi senang tak perlu ada gateway So benda ni kita tak dapat, belum ada lagi semua so, orang mesti ada itu dia ni So, B B yang berkata di low pen Low pen, okay uh, Five to so five Dia berkata di Over five G lah Nah, ya, so similar Yang luar gateway ni pun ada yang wired Ada yang wired type, ada yang uh, Yang Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi back end So kita nak, kita nak, kita nak buang Wi-Fi gateway ni Nak terus ke IoT <laughs> Yes, tapi sekarang kita dah deploy 5G dan So benda tu belum belum ada dekat market lagi sebab Ultimately dia macam asing lah, mungkin not Not as, as, as Asing mungkin this year, mungkin in uh, two or three years time Akan boom Bersu ni, once Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so dia dia ngam-ngam berkembang dengan big data analytics. So berkembangnya big data punya punya apa? Pil. Asing ni bukan pemas kali. Tak pendek lagi. Ah, no ni ah. So for IoT ni power lah. Ah, so how how do you use 5G punya ni, you adjust lah, coding ke, I mean, I think that's why we come to research here lah. Kami nak pergi point dia, ada tak barang? Tak ada, ada tak barang? Tak ada, ada barang? Ya, barang. Kan tu je, kami sepuluh semua tengok how do you manage product lah. We cannot, ya lah, kita fokus on that lah. So, we rely on the research. That's why yang bawa apa, that's why I'm even paling wow to swear. So oh, I think one of it yang nampak lah uh, Macam ni lah uh, And then even uh, Mounted device pun tak ada yang fragile it is Tak ada macam Tapi kalau pakai tu panas lah So how? So, dia ingat kertis lah So, so dia kalau sekali dengan Bagi dengan Usually yang Mostly they use the solar panel Solar panel Dia ni Okay, okay. 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 
Tak itulah kalau nak kita memang risk ya. Jadi kita tak ada native site juga. Jadi kami So sekarang ni Fajir mau cerita ni lebih 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 kita boleh hello. Jangan dengar atas dikat tadi ni. Thank you Mr. Muaz for the insightful session just now. It has been truly eye-opening to learn on offshore telecommunication and the transformative capabilities of 5G in unlocking digital acceleration for the oil and gas industry. Today, as there is an announcement for the next EPI Technical Meeting Series 3 2024 will be held on 21st of May 2024 online with invited speaker Siti Nur Ain Sukito with the title of Antenna Application, Telecommunication in Oil and Gas. This is the QR code for registration and for student presenter to register for EPI Technical Meeting Series 3, 2024. Brothers and sisters, it is truly an honor for me to reintroduce our second distinguished speaker for today, Professor Dr. M. D. Rafiqat Islam, currently serving as the professor at IIUM. So professor Rafiqat has made significant contributions to academia and research. He has an impressive record of publishing more than 300 research papers in both national and international journals and conferences. Furthermore, his mentorship has guided 22 PhD and 52 master students to successful postgraduate and graduate supervision and post. Without further ado, So there is an LPMPT in MC webinar series that we have on 19th March 2024 online on the week. This week will be Professor Istiana Thompson, the Maryland University of Perugia. The title will be Additive Manufacturing Emerging Opportunities for Microwave Components. The next webinar that will be held on the 14th of May, May 2024, also online on the main speaker, Professor Mark 
The title would be 100 to 300 gigahertz virus, transistors, ACS, and sister. So we're waiting for four programmy, four student presenters, and for registration of MPPM 3 to the and scan the QR code in red. For today's second we can scan the QR code in red on the side. I'd like to also promote a 2024 Malaysia Japan workshop on rainbow technology. So, if you have any comments, feel free to send them to our presentation. If you have any issues, please let us know. Thank you. Default. <laughs> 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 Let us continue our event today by welcoming our esteemed speaker, Professor Dr. Amir Bikul Islam, who will deliver a talk on radio wave propagation and FSO transmission through environments, challenges, and mitigations. Please welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سو سلام السلام عليكم اند فيري جود مورنينج تو اول اوف يو اند اسبيشال ثانكس تو اور اي تي بولي ذا ريبريزنتاتيفز هير اند جيف اند ميك ذس يو نو اولسو اي ابريشيت اول اوف يو تو بي هير ويلكم هير and you agree to be in iron campus <laughs> so thanks all of you with uh without further delay just i going to just i'm sharing some of my experience actually which we uh, have come through with our students here some of the major main some of the issues you know and and how to go through the solutions so you can see that uh, topic is rf and fso actually and we know that both have the challenges of the environments and in malaysia we are experiencing the the rain of course as usual if you see the rain you know normally this scenario we can see almost every day afternoon right the everywhere and of course in, even in the 5g environment now when we are talking about the outdoor you know an outdoor how safe it will be you know the outdoor environment in case of the rain how much it will be safe if we go towards the higher frequencies and the whole idea of the 5g is that we want to exploit the benefits you know from the higher frequencies but how the higher frequency will you know seriously uh, how big challenge actually for our case and also i bring another issue those countries are suffering of the you know the sand and dust storms especially the desert we have many students and lecturers from you know the this arid area especially the desert area so we bring those issues also little bit okay that's why i need just to go a little bit about the how the fates and mitigation we can try and also fso how the, how the rain and fade is affecting the fso how to come out from this problem so if you look here the the case of the rain and haze you know the case of the rain and haze you see the one is the terrestrial communication we can see very simple in the ground one you know if, if we see the satellite link you know people last time all, only talk about the geostationary you know the ones we are facing the astro is facing but whenever it comes down to the leo satellite like uh, just now the communication uh, speaker was talking about the they are talking the star line you know, they start using mm -hmm. by the and the star line they also provide the kvn you know and kvn in malaysia we cannot imagine you know <laughs> because we have said have five has kvn and whenever the rain we found is very difficult to survive even we are we are talking about the ku band you know ku band astro until now they go up to 99.7 percent availability 99.7 just imagine where 5g we are talking about the 59 99.999 right ultra reliable wherever, wherever the astro cannot give 99.7 percent more than that at ku band you not k <laughs> so what what would the problem and how can we think about our future backbone as well as the other communication so so the thing is here if you see the if you go to the 5g performance the low mid and high high bands so you see the the right side i try to show that 528 gigahertz they are proposing for a small i mean the micro cell for you know the macro cell or from the indoor and up to the outdoor one uh, one kilometer they're proposing it for 5g for 28 gigahertz also okay so how it will be solved with the problem of the rain like here if you see the for 28 gigahertz if you are talking for the 5g you see even the uh, the tree you know trees also have a big effect you see the folios we have the rain also have an effect you see the even the shadow shadowing effect of a human human body also have an effect you know the for 28 gigahertz so when you go to the high frequencies so the effects is so high just imagine the current the 
4G, we are talking 2.4 gigahertz. See the free space path loss? Just I try to show with 200 meter, only 200 meter, just from 2.4, if you go to 38 gigahertz, you see the more than 40 dB extra you have to calculate here. You see the only 200 meter path, you know, not the, I'm not talking the kilometer. So your FSO free, sorry, the free space path loss also jump. You see, 100 meter, 200 meter, you see, from uh, 2.4 to 38 is almost jump to 30 dB or even more, you know. So what will happen? The rain and the other losses. So this is our one of the, you see, the assumption, like in the frequency, if you go to the around 38 gigahertz, so the right side, I show the, the rain, you know. So we found that even in a tropical country, it go to one dB per kilometer. But when you come back to the our Malaysian rain environment, you know, the our tropical, not the temperate, sorry, temperate is one dB per kilometer. Here is 30 dB, down to 30 dB. So how can we survive if, if we go to the, this is one kilometer path in outdoor environment. So it will be very serious, you know, the, so the 30 dB rain loss is happening per kilometer uh, and the, and for 200 meter distance also it will be 6 dB, extra 6 dB loss due to the rain. So, so these are the things actually challenge for us in future. So what happened uh, to find some, uh, you know, to do the measurement, we have this, uh, this setup for 38 gigahertz and 28 gigahertz. We measured the attenuation for only 300 meter path, 300, very short distance path. You know, it, it measurement was done in UTM, you know, so I was also involved here. So this measurement shows, you see that only for, 300 meter path when we do the one year measurement. So you see the, if you are looking for 99.99% reliable system, you have to extra 10 dB for 26, you have to calculate 16 dB for 38 gigahertz path, only for 300 meter. So that's a, you know, big issue we have to think about for 5G implementation and future 6G implementation in the outdoor environment. So we have uh, like a, if you say the 5G high band use. So once you are going, going to use as a backhaul, you see your distance will be long. You know, of course, the small cell, it can be 100 meter, 200 meter. If you're talking a RBS based station, you are talking the 5G you will use as a backhaul, you know, and it will be 2 gigahertz again. So just imagine how the problem would be in a tropical country. How we will we'll survive with this rain in the outdoor environment? So in addition, the satellite path, you just uh, look here, this is the, we are talking about the satellite. We have some measurement in Athens, Greece. You know, the Greece is European country, you know, the, the rain, highest rain, they face 40 millimeter per hour intensity at 0 0.01 percent. So these are the three bands, they are, you know, the 5 dB up to 45 dB is their total loss in the satellite path. They assume only 30 dB is 30 dB is a very low uh, elevation angle. It's a huge path, actually. And we did the measurement in Malaysia, K band, you know, and of course the K band also we did the measurement because the MSR 5 has the K band. The B band is only just estimated. So we found, you see, the loss is very, you see, the in the K band, and K band, say K band, we have 40 dB loss in Malaysia, whereas over Europe, the non tropical countries like Europe and America, they have up to 15 dB. So they can survive, you know, K, K band, of course, they can survive the, uh, the, even the B band, of course, challenge for them also. But for us, even the, the K band also is a big challenge. Even the K band also almost 20 dB loss, extra loss, which is, you know, by our astro is already doing these things. So with this situation, we had the, some students, you know, they try to find out the exact, the, the values and which can be helped for the design for the rain. So the, you know, the rain effects, normally we consider this way. One is the scattering effect. Another is the absorption. 
And this is the common phenomena actually we consider. So some, you know, one one of our group, they try to find the dynamic characteristics of the field in, in the satellite, especially the KU band signals with the astro signals. We take it from a MIASAT 3A for one year. So we we try to find and see the two characteristics here. One is the phase slope. You know, the phase slope is how quickly the fade is rising and fade is again diminishing, the slope of the fade, as well as the the fade duration, you know, the fade interface duration. So these three types of measurement for one year data, you know, we try in Malaysia using this type of setup we put, you know, and we sample the data with 100 milliseconds, so less than one second, 0 0.1 second. So after sampling, we can find the fade slope easily, we filter the data, and these are the fade slope statistics, you know, occurrence. And in the characteristics of the fade slope, if you look the the our measurement and previous ITUR uh, proposed some fade slope model, which is mostly the measurement is done in France and Netherlands. So we found that in, in Malaysia, you know, the higher fade, like a 12 dB uh, per second, you know, dB per second is the slope here, and that slope is is much you see more flat, you know, the measurement show the more flat than the ITUR proposal. That means our, the fit slope also is flattened in the, in the satellite case. So we had the measurement, so this is the equation, of course. We had the phase duration less than 30 seconds, higher than 30 seconds. How many seconds the phase duration happens greater than certain phase. All this data actually can be useful for the you know, the, uh, for the electronic circuit design for the receiver, you know, that how long the east state can survive and how long it, it can go. So until now, actually, we could not use much inside the circuit design of this dynamics characteristics of the fade. This is a lot of data, I think. So, so we found that the, there is a difference, our fade characteristics in tropical country, the slope, the duration, interfade duration, then, the previous measurements done in the other European and uh, non-tropical countries. So we want to use actually this type of information in the electronic circuit design, the receiver design can. Okay, then we have done some study on the uh, two of the diversity technique, time diversity and site diversity. You heard about this too. Uh, this is very, uh, you know, for the especially the and a satellite already using the time diversity and site diversity. Miasa use the site diversity for uh, KU band with the Bukit Jalil and Cyber Jaya. It's a 20 kilometer is their difference. And for KU band, Miasa 5 is using the site diversity with, with uh, Cyber Jaya and Rawang, 45 kilometer. And they found is good improvement. So we just try to see some like here, the time diversity. Actually, the time diversity is idea is like this. You see that if you can delay the signals, you can see the first signals without delay, the red mark. And with same signals, this is a captured signals from yes, uh, K UN. You see that if we delay 30 minutes and then the resultant fade is coming in the second figure, the you see the, the black black curve. So that means the the at beginning the fade was up to 30 dB. You see, but if you can delay, it can reduce up to 6 dB, 7 dB. If you can delay, I mean, the same signals, we will resend again after the fade is over. Of course, it's called the time diversity technique. We can, we can uh, actually all the, all the information and the signals we can store. And during the fade, we delay it. You know, and then after the fade is high fade part is gone, we resend again. So we find that we can overcome the problem. But problem is the real time issue, right? <laughs> How can you survive in uh, real time? Of course, the data transmission and others is very good, but the real time will be always facing the problem. So when we do this thing, one year data, we do the calculation and we found this is the improvement we can see. You see, now normally you can see the uh, for 0.01 percentage of outpace, mean 99.99 percent of availability. If we delay, you see that only one minute immediately we can improve, you see, few dB. If you can delay up to 10 minutes, 
you see the whole scenario is changing you see we can improve from 28 db up to 14 db even at 0.001 percent is out is if we delay up to 60 minutes in that's the characteristics of malaysia i mean that not the european country this delay is less you know because the their rain is a long time you know surviving our rain is very peak happening for a short time after that is gone so we can find out exactly that how much delay we can you know we can pick up then our design if we can consider that delay maybe we can even the fade is there it doesn't matter rain is there we can still survive mm -hmm. you know we can survive with the delay okay second uh, second you see this is for the site diversity where we have a two different site we receive the same signals you know and we can see the improvement like uh, here so maybe you see this side is completely out right but other side maybe is completely free and if these two sides are connected say fiber connected so we can survive you know this is the way already the um, mere set with the uplink you know the mere set is already surviving with bukit jalil and and uh, and and the cyber these two are they have a cyber uh, site diversity technique and it's very rarely happened that both will be completely down of course some cases it is also happening so we just do some uh, so this is the improvement you can see site diversity improvement if single site is very flat very high but you use a join it will be very you will be very good availability immediately so just i give you a small uh, our measurement we did UKM with uh, Professor Mandeep and our lab for our campus here, IIM and UKM campus. So we did simultaneous measurement. You know, the distance is 37.36 kilometer exactly, aerial distance. So just one event I'm showing you. You see that this is some, uh, some day happening, the rain 15 to at 3 o'clock. This, the red is UKM and blue is IIM. So when you see the UKM is low, I am, it is a simultaneous case. Still, you see that it's not the same if we have a distance. So we have one year complete data. You see here, one year we have a 381 rating cases, both sides. And only out of that, 10 has concurrent, you know. <laughs> out of 381, the 10 has the concurrent and same time is happening, both, both places. We have this measurement also exactly the time you know so when we do the now uh you see that this is if iim data alone is cumulative distribution is like this the red one but if i consider both together and take in the only the lowest part you know then our community should jump to here you see the red black one <laughs> mean that you can have now triple nine i know five nine availability with only 10 db your paid margin you know, if we can use both as a diversity, you know, you came and here is a 37 kilometer is a joint probability we call. So exactly, actually, if we have this one in the case of 5G also, the short distance might be, we can have a, a one base station is a diversity with another one, with that another one, maybe we can solve the problem, you know, because the range cell also is limited. We have a measurement up to the heavy rain go up to four to five kilometer cell size, you know. So this can be one of the one of the future solution, the site diversity. We have the measurement here. Uh, so this attenuation wise, you see that same uh, 99.99, if you go to the single site, your your 22 dB is the attenuation in KUM. You know, but if you use the join with UKM and IIM, your attenuation jump to one dB only. <laughs> For 99.99, one dB you have to take care. It's never happened together, you see. Even never, if you go to the 4 dB fed margin, maybe you are completely, you know, no more, uh, no more, uh, uh, I mean, the, you are 100% available. You know, out as free. Even satellite link can be out as free, you see, that if we go certain distance with the site diversity technique. So this is the one uh, things. Uh, and our uh, Benjamin also show with the, some other model of the European site diversity that we found our measured gain is higher than the non-tropical countries in the diversity system. Okay, then I'm just talking about the FSO. FSO, I think the we have, you know, the FSO is here, we are transmitting the ledger and that is the receiver. So what happened? We want to see the FSO, how much affected by the rain. So we put a FSO link here in, in our campus. 
this is happening few years back already the link is no more there so we have a rain gaze together with a professor link is a light point link you know which is um, 850 nanometer our wavelength and we use the power also is you can see the uh, transmit power of six milliwatt and etc etc and see the sensitivity up to minus 45 dBm. So what we did, we did the system like this, and we have 800 meter with uh, our engineering faculty with a one of the hostel, Mahalla, 800 meter link. So this is the Dr. Suri Jasmethanman. So we found that attenuation FSO is happening also very high. You see, this is here data 800 meter, you see the point 0, 0.0 nowadays, it is almost 20 dB loss we found. The due to rain, you know, only, only rain. Okay, then this data we try to fit with the car, which is well known car with uh, like a similar like a uh, rain, K after the power alpha you heard about, those are happening. So previously some measurement in Japan and other uh, France and we do our measurement, we propose some you know, the modeling, and we found that actually FSO in, in Malaysia, our measurement shows the less, uh, less loss than the, what happened in the Japan and, and even the France. You see the, the blue line, which is our measure, which is less than uh, with the other two. The, the, sorry, here is the Singapore and Indonesia. I, I tried with the others also, our measurement is less. So now, the FSO, if you want to get the availability with the path, you know, we found that the rain alone, we can go, if you want to 99.99%, then you can go up to 1.25 kilometer path. Otherwise, the system will be after that, you know, we cannot survive yeah, with this availability. So after that, we get idea that in Malaysia, we have sometime, last time, with a lot of haze, remember? And haze time, we have some data from the meteorological department. And FSO is seriously affected by the haze and rain both. So these are the, after our measurement, we found that if you want to go with the, you see the one kilo, uh, five kilometer link in Malaysia is difficult for FSO. You see the, we go to up to one kilometer, even 100 meter. So 100 meter also, your attenuation, you can go, you see, it will go to the, up to 10 dB uh, loss will be there, even 100 meter, because of haze and rain together. So after that, you know that we are trying to propose that hybrid. You see, this is the same uh, same communication link. If we do the FSO and RF will be the uh, the diversity for FSO. You see, the RF is the diversity together uh, combined. We call the hybrid FSO RF uh, link to actually to mitigate our problem. So when we tried this one, you know, the previous already some study they did. Uh, and then, so FSO is going and at the same time, RF also will be standby, you know, during the rain time. Rain time FSO will be down, but RF can support. So we, we when we try this one, you see that before, uh, this is not our uh, here, but we have some from the literature, we found that when they use the 2.4 gigahertz, RF as a, uh, as a backup for the FSO, then problem is we can see very good availability. You see, almost we can go up to uh, if you go say four kilometer, sorry, uh, one one kilometer at least we can go ninety nine point nine nine percent available. But problem is when you switch off switch on the RF, your data rate will be ten megabit per second. You see, when you are with the with the FSO, maybe 100 megabit per second or over. So now we will lose the data rate also. <laughs> Problem is when you go to the RF, you cannot support the same data rate. So then we think that, okay, why not, you know, we can go to the higher frequency, like uh, this is the link range with the FSO and RF, is the 2.4 gigahertz. So we tried with the, you know, this is the Malaysian data, haze and rain together, you know, we get. So we try to do the availability calculation for RF with the all frequency range. From we start from you see the up to 100 gigahertz. You know, then we found that if we take the frequency from 20 to you know the 20 to 70 or 80, then we can have a better data rate. Even it can be RF as a as a standby for the FSO. 
So we tried this this one and we found that we can improve the availability up to, you see, the uh, 99 point, if we go to 58 gigahertz RF, then we can go to 99.95% with the only FSO, uh, sorry, RF. And hybrid case, it is a 99.9989% we can see with the FSO with the hybrid, you know. So meaning that we can use the RF as a standby or the diversity with FSO, we can improve the system actually, you know. So the we we have, so this is the one issue. And another is the dust storm. I just very quickly, I go through. Maybe some of the, you have idea, like we have a few students uh, working you know, there from Sudan. So we luckily we get, you know, they come and they also try to find that what will happen during the dust storm. And 15 to 45 events per year is occurring, you know, the most of the desert countries. This is the Sahara, Sahara, African Sahara. So that one event, this is the, I get the, from the meteorological department and our uh, station is there in near Khartoum Airport. Of course, now is a fight war going on. This is before, you know, few years before. 10 years almost. So, so this is the Khartoum airport. You see the dust started two hours and becoming, you see that so dark. You see, now we cannot see anything. You see the situation is, this is the daytime. You know, daytime, it was before like this. Now it's finished. Cannot see anything. <laughs> it, it, the visibility drops to even less than one meter. You see, now we cannot see only few light. So, so then we try to, to using the same idea of the rain you know the absorption and scattering of energy we try to make some theoretical model you know and our student uh, developed the models for the dust and when you do the theoretical model it's of course the same way the rain we integrate for one kilometer path you know in the equation and then we develop the model but we unfortunately we found that measurement is very far from the model you know measurement always very high Whatever the model previously, people, and this is also our student, he developed the model here. And then they found it is very different from the measurement. So we, after that, we say, why not? We try to see the, uh, these three parameters, you know, we can pick up and try to make a empirical modeling, you know, visibility, frequency, particle size, dielectric constant of dark particles. So these three, when we take, you know, just i show you very very quickly one okay this is our um, empirical modeling idea that we have to take take the temperature humidity the attenuation and together and process with the data so we fix six links you know near the khartoum airport and this was the existing operational links you know the out of that three are the 14 to 15 gigahertz and others are 22 gigahertz link at the different length you know Different length. So after getting the data, we you see the this is a we call it a dust collector. You know, we, we, we sample of the dust also we collect from there. It's the working. Okay. When the sample we bring in in our lab, you know, we have a, um, uh, a, a particle analyzer. You see the particle in the microscope. The dust particle looks like this. You see, which is very surprising for us. You know, we thought is a very when we go to the electronic microscope, the dust has no uh, shape actually you see the shape is so much complex you know the rain has a, 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 a at least some obloid shape right rain we can take uh, as obloid but this is very difficult then we go with the average you see the how the looks like the particles we collect from there so when you take its measurement in the particle size analyzer you see these are the particle distributions in the micro micrometer so we use this particle size and also the these are the six links you said during the dust happening some of the day the loss also heavy you see here also several db loss you can see up to 14 db we observe the loss is there in the in the 14 and 28 gigahertz so we use all this data you know then when we try to make the some model you know and then we found that this model just i show you you see the all previously we developed the model which is the theoretical base you see the bottom and the measurement is the red <laughs> so it's very difficult to justify with the different visibility limit you know so just imagine is a i mean it's not comparable at all then we found the what the region you know 
then we found that one of the big region is the when the dust is occurring dust is not a alone you know dust always contains some water you know moisture and and the particle we are putting in the theoretical analysis that particle is a you know the dialectic constant when water comes is imaginary component exponentially increase and imaginary component is the one who is contribute the loss of the signal most of the loss of the signal so then we consider this moisture content you know inside the model we consider the moisture content and these are the moisture content we come out with a different frequency with the when the moisture is there imaginary part jump up to 15 you know this is the epsilon double prime for the dust particle so then we consider this one and then we modify the model you know recently we published also in IEEE transaction then we found it is very close now all the frequency we measured we found is very close to each other so then of course uh, these two papers already both are accepted because we are uh, considering the the moisture content and modify the previous theoretical model so the conclusion is here my conclusion very very fast the rain has the significant impacts on 5g channel modeling and r2 satellite of course both cases so time diversity and site diversity techniques can improve the availability significantly during heavy rain phase and rain and haze both are significant and challenging parameters for fso you see and hybrid fso can improve the performance during the rains and or haze and sand and dust storms also has the severe impacts on rf fso propagation and both you know needs to be investigated thoroughly because we in the in the desert until now you know i uh, visited and uh, one of few of the researchers in saudi you know saudi Arabia, they say that after the dust storm you are forget about we are you know the whole antenna is submerged on the sands <laughs> we need the physical you know something to first clean the because there is a big thick you know wall formed by the sand after the storm over he said we cannot think about the your propagation first we have to save our antenna <laughs> and the equipment is already lost yeah, because uh, it's so huge you know that's a storm happening and whole thing is under the sand and now they're thinking how can have a uh, very good you know the maybe robot or any of the robotic things which can after dust can clean at least clean the antenna take it out from the sand <laughs> so that is the big challenge for them even though a raining case we don't we are luckily we don't have the rain does not accumulate and finish you know because we have a already radom we have cover with the, the teflon everything you know still there is some effect so this is the conclusion and uh, just sharing some of my ideas so now i'm open for the questions already. It's sincere thank you for your for sharing your expertise with us we deeply appreciate your knowledge we have shared in relation of investing understanding of wireless communication system is there any question from the floor? Yeah. Thank you very much. Very good explanation. And in Japan, we also remove the dust from the antenna. In Japan, the rainfall are small. Oh, small. Small pressure. <laughs> Different dust and all that. And uh, in your presentation, you show the comparison of uh, attenuation of rain in Japan and the Malaysia. Because mm -hmm. I surprised in Malaysia, attenuation is smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how is happening, right? Well, but okay, maybe I just reply or okay. Thank you, Prof. Your mother. So this actually what happened, this is only, I'm uh, my comparison was not in the rain actually, it was, F, sorry, not RF, it was FSO. FSO is the laser beam and uh, actually that I go back, is, it is not the rain actually, but the rain in Malaysia is much higher than Japan, no doubt. <laughs> the impact on FSO, so this is FSO. Yeah, so this is uh, Dr. Surya's medal and last time. 
where I'm going actually, mistake. Uh, this is the first one. So this is the one. Actually, not Japan, right? Oh, okay, this is the Japan major and carbonium, right? Uh, so now, now the issue is here. This is actually until now is very, uh, very. Uh, I mean, or we can say is a uh, little bit mysterious, right? So the here the issue is from the rain we consider the cell size of the rain drop, you know, and it is affected with the lambda the scattering in the case of rain, you know. That's why the frequency is higher. We always high, and the in intensity of the rain also higher. Of course, the loss is higher. But in case of FSO, you know, FSO is not clearly, uh, you know, the measurement, only one case of Japan, only one paper or two paper we found the measurement they done. It's not very, very clear. Even in the case of Arbonio, who was measured in France, this is the FSO lane, you know, not the rain, not the RF. So that's why we found the measurement, whatever they propose with the rain and the attenuation they found in, DB, in kilometer. It is need to be actually further looks around that because for our case, we have 800 meter path only. Then we extrapolate for DP per kilometer from 800. And these cases, they have a different length, you know, a different length. You know, they have a longer length and they cut it to short DP per kilometer. And for the longer length, always the range intensity variation is different. You know, they, there is a reduction factor, intensity variation. So that's why it is not clearly really does not show clearly that how the japan is higher you know our, our measurement is lower than japan few db actually is a few db if you go to the higher range rate 84 uh, we go up to 80, 80 or 84 uh, sorry somewhere 80 then it is a 18 db and it, it japan shows around uh, something uh, 23 24 60. yeah 60 db so up to highest we have 80 dB, but we found after that the, this Malaysian measurement cross the Japan when they go hundred over very because the drop size is very big after that. He said some drop size is important here. Yeah. Very low. Yeah, because of that the sale will be also longer. There will be large size than if you have a longer time is convective is go long distance so it might have an, that type of effect also we have not confirmed about this issue but we found this Malay, our measurement and japanese is the paper actually from the measurement done in somewhere they propose the k and alpha value for japan and itr has uh, accepted this france and japan <laughs> before yes No yeah. yeah, very rare measurement. Only one measurement we took. You know, in here also Malaysia only we have one. We cannot find any more. That's the region is very difficult to confirm the whole findings. Right? Really. Any student? Oh, student. Okay. 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 Please. There is. What is the five G frequency band? Using uh, use currently in Asia, like cell phone, you know, but are they using 20, 26 gigahertz or 38 gigahertz? Both spectral and <laughs> let me answer. <laughs> Do you want to answer? <laughs> use on the mic. <laughs> yeah, we point four is two point two point one, excuse me, four G. Yeah. So for IP, so 100, 3 .5, 3 .5 to 4.5 or something. Yeah. Only 3.5. Because uh, because you see the none of the vendors agree to go to 26, 28 start, you know. And not only Malaysia, all whole of our Asian zone. So we are currently using the sub band of six, you know, 3.5 to with 4.5, which is the downlink of C band also. You know, the, that's why always we have a negotiation with the uh, 
uh, Miaset, another satellite who is using 3.5 to 4.5, they're downlink 3.5 uh, to uh, or 3.7 to 4.2. So we already negotiate with uh, Malaysia is going to 5G for that band. Is there no rain problem? So yes, we need to wait for the reporting heads. We'll, for consumer level, you can only get what? And we tell me, so it's not practical. Indoors. Yeah, every door. Uh, just for localized, there, there is some, 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 some uh, proposal just for, for uh, there's, there's also the uh, fiber. So something fiber as well. So it's, so it's, it's for totally last meter from the nearest to home. So home, we set up fiber. Fiber physical, similar to what, what we are using, focus power only. But this one, we use get higher bandwidth. But in terms of practical wise, very short. Research, can okay, for deployment, quite hard. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Prof. Rafiq Paul, Prof. Yamada, and Mr. Muaz for the wonderful discussion. Brothers and sisters, before we continue our event, we would like to invite all participants for a photography session. Firstly, we would like to start with those who attend virtually. Please get ready and open your camera if possible. Online, so we can be here, right? Yeah. Okay. Online, online, everybody. So those have no laptop here, you can join with somebody. <laughs> yeah, online is more than here. Because, so of course, the you, you know the lunch will be. Set, uh, <laughs> so, the is on this, uh, because the students' presentation got to this side. <laughs> Many people camera is they're sleepy. Maybe camera is there time for the photo session. Like at twelve thirty, one o'clock there will be another photo session. So that they know sleeping people also will come back. Yeah. Please open your camera. Okay. One, two, three. Another one. One, two, three. All right, thank you. Next, for participants in the main conference room at IUM, please move in front for a photography session. All the students are at the Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Thank 
Sister Yana, okay. All right, one, two, three. One, two, three. Wait, some in. One, two, three. One, two, three. But another one, please, for <laughs> All right, one, two, Okay. 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 Thank you so much for the wonderful creation. All the recipients, please have your seats. We will continue in our next session. Brothers and sisters, let's continue our discussion today with student research presentation. A little reminder for all presenters, you will be given 10 minutes to present your research. One minute for preparation, seven to present, and two minutes for Q&A. To start, I would like to invite our first presenter for today with the research title, Design and Development of Body Couple Antenna for Biomedical Applications. This research is supervised by Dr. Muhammad Saifur Riza and Professor M.D. Rafiqul Islam. Please welcome Mr. M.D. Abu Tayyab Sakit from IIUM.
Assalamu alaikum. First of all, I would like to thank uh, our IPT technical members and all of the lecturers from other universities and available lectures, all of you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, I would like to share about my research, uh, which is entitled with Design and Development for Decouple Antenna for Biomedical Application, uh, which is supervised by Dr. Seth uh, Reserve Industry and uh, Dr. Profit Islam. And first of all, I would like to give a brief introduction about uh, my research. So I have uh, this research. Uh, in, if I see in the literature, uh, estimated 1.5 million Americans sustained traumatic brain injuries uh, throughout the year. It's a report by WHO. And over the world, if you consider the numbers, it will be like uh, emerging number and it will be uh, alarming to introduce uh, for the researchers to uh, back up this problem to do it, uh, give it a sustainable solution. In order to that, I, uh, I got the motivation on research, doing research on this biomedical application, which is more uh, concentrated on oil technologies. As the technology has been changing a lot, we know that all of the devices we are trying to uh, make it portable and viable in terms of the patient uh, convenience and their accurate uh, diagnosis. Uh, therefore, if I concentrate more on head imaging applications, so I will talk about microwave uh, imaging and sensing, which already has been applied on the brain stroke patient and other in brain injuries and other lung cancer and breast cancer reaction as well. Uh, this kind of uh, micro devices, you can consider it for which is already available. You can follow MRI, CT scan, all those uh, already available in the market. Uh, in microwave imaging, if you talk about first, uh, there are two categories of microwave tomography and radar based vibration system. Yeah, if I make uh, more emphasis on microwave radar vibration system, it's more accurate than the a microwave a tomography, where the microwave tomography try to do the reconstruct the actual dielectric properties of the human body. On the other hand, radar based wireless system, which give you the transmitting the short pulse, which uh, give the electromagnetic signal inside the body and do the detection with the low computational time and more real time signal. And if we say about the conventional medical imaging, which was introduced uh, initially in 1973, and later on they increased on first on lung cancer, and later on throughout the, in 2024 until now, they have been used in uh, almost all of the human body parts. But for me, I will emphasize on more on head imaging application. Here you can see that we have been uh, used this conventional medical imaging since uh, like. 20 years or more than that, it's out town MRI and the extreme in existence. Therefore, uh, as I told about the radar based micro system has the real time monitoring and time accuracy is more higher than other systems. So, here this has been more popular nowadays, and there you can see in the uh, picture it's already used in microwave uh, head imaging system. Here you can see they brought a uh, good antenna on the patient hand and from there, they get the switching system and the, later on, they process the signal throughout the computer. This is the basic uh, RRPS micro system. And until now, uh, what are the challenges uh, so far getting uh, this uh, kind of micro RRPS system, which is MRI and CT scan, which is getting the long screening time. And whenever you want to do the uh, any kind of uh, experiment, it takes time and you need to move the patient towards the MRI and CT scan, which is time, uh, time consuming in terms of uh, like uh, instant uh, feedback, which is not more accurate. And secondly, whenever you are putting the antennas, in, including the human uh, body, near to the human body, there are more uh, back scattering signal from the body. And due to that, most of the time, we cannot uh, penetrate the proper power inside the human body and which will give us the better results. In order to that, we uh, in, we also uh, see that in terms of the other antennas, we get the antennas are already rigid in the structure. We need to put the uh, patient uh, inside the antennas. 
as I just seen in here, you can see this antenna structure of the energy that I need to bring the patient uh, inside this uh, antenna areas. And lastly, uh, the antennas we only have in the market, which is uh, more not uh, body couple, if you can attach with the body, because due to the body's uh, itself has uh, dielectric properties, which uh, like discontinue the returning signal and giving the less result. So in order to uh, these challenges to solve, we started uh, with a solution, which is the developing a normal a body couple antenna, which is all concentrated for only for hand imaging application. And later on, what we understood, uh, it's not only about the antenna. We are when we are placing in, uh, into the body, because of the body dielectric constant, the antenna performance has been dropped. That's why I emphasize on designing an impedance between layer between the head and, and the antenna. And finally, as I told you about the earlier, the antennas are always the rigid and we need to move the patient inside the antenna areas. In order to solve that, we make we try to make it wearable and portable and flexible. So these are the three solutions I was proposing uh, to in order to get a better antenna for medical application. So this is the basic CPWF monocol antenna, which has been designed using the basic uh, antenna equations initially, later on uh, using the CPW feed and the, this triangular and Rectangular shape has been utilized for optimized the antenna performance in terms of uh, specifically on head imaging applications. This is the front side of the antenna, and this is the back side of the antenna. We, we didn't touch anything on the back side of the antenna. Whatever we did is on the top uh, top layer. In uh, in the right side, you can see this uh, antenna has been attached with uh, two other layers, which I used as the interface matching layer with the dielectric constants of 20. Why I use this, uh, uh, these two materials because of the for whenever using the head for the these simulations, it takes a long time to do the simulation and optimize the area. Therefore, initially I use this uh, impedance matching layer with dielectric properties in both sides uh, for the initial getting the S1 S1 normal. So this is my uh, impedance matching layer, which I uh, later on I, I attach with the back side of the antenna. It is the uh, same with the same dimension as the second mm and thickness of 6 mm. So this uh, this uh, impedance matching layer has been designed in the CSD first. Later on, after the attaching with the antenna, which has been simulated in the normal free space and the with body antenna. And these are the materials that have been used to make this impedance matching layer physically. This is the silicone, which gives me the flexibility of the dielectric uh, impedance matching layer. And the next is this is the barium that I have used for this making uh, this impedance matching layer. This is our, you can see the particle sizes, uh, all of them are lower than 20 micrometer. So the combination between these. But the barium titanate was the key factor for making the impedance matching layer. And these are the process uh, we used for making the impedance matching layer. Initially, we got the barium titanate powder, which is properly green and uh, in micrometer. This uh, barium titanate powder has been mixed with the silicon gel and later on it was uh, mixing with the strainer which uh, was uh, more than 500 and later on we take out the thread from those mixed air and put it into the fridge for 30 minutes later on we cure in the room temperature for almost uh, six hours and finally we got the, this uh, silicon barium substrate and these are the Different ratio has been utilized to make sure that high dielectric constants are integrated to matching with the head, which was 20 dielectric constants. In, initially, I tried to make it a higher ratio of polyvinyl and silicon, but uh, due to some, I don't know, limitations about, about among the materials, I couldn't make it. But later on, I have I changed the ratio of uh, mixing the silicon and 
why the titan which later on give me this all uh, other impedance matching layer samples and which i has, uh, later on when i got the impedance matching layer so, so we went to the fabrication of the antenna itself. We did a very simple way using the copper and the PET. We, we used this uh, PET and copper tape for making the antenna. Later on, we add the, the NPS matching layer, which is you can see already flexible uh, due to the body of titanium silicon mixture. And we attach that impedance matching layer with our design antenna. And this is our. Uh, Simulated result whenever we use the impedance matching layer with the antenna and this is the height of this is the SOS parameter with the very uh, large bandwidth from 0 0.5 uh, to until 1.1. And this the blue line indicates the, the performance without the impedance matching layer when we place that antenna on our head. So this is the comparison between where we can see the significant improvement of using the impedance matching layer. And after making the impedance matching layer, there is uh, always a uh, uh, plan for the validation. We have been uh, catch many of the samples with the different ratio of silicon. We go through the dielectric probe measurement with the bending and uh, without bending condition, which gives us around 7 dB dielectric constant of uh, that matching layer, which is not our targeted one. still. I could say we managed to go seven. So hopefully, if we get the time frame more and uh, more ratio can be, uh, we can experiment. I wish we can make it until twenty. So this is my uh, measurement of uh, antenna with the portable VNA. Later on, we also did the uh, proper VNA with, uh, in our lab, but this is for the my convenience. Uh, you can see the. The antenna with the impedance matching layer has been applied on my head, and we, we connect it to the this portable VNA, so which gives us a very uh, almost accurate result, like more better result than simulated results. So, therefore, in conclusion, I can say we designed a triangular monopole antenna, which has been giving giving us the bandwidth of 0 0.2 until 2 gigahertz, and we have been used the barium titanate and silicon as a impedance matching layer. Who, uh, I never seen any uh, work so far which has been used this barium titanate as a uh, silicon. So I can claim that this is the first work I have done so far using the barium as an impedance matching. And finally, we did the final measurement on the human head, head phantom, use, uh, using this uh, antenna with the matching layer. And what are the suggestion can be done and the future work for the directionality we can use the uh, amc structure and other structure on the ground construction of the in antenna for making the more directional and in terms of flexibility maybe we can use some other pdms or some other uh, silicon gel which has a more viscosity than the one i'm using because whenever i was using this silicon it was more viscous and it was really hard to mixing the barium titan powder with this silicon. So hopefully, uh, I want to do it uh, in future, getting some more liquid uh, silicon or PDMS to make the more higher ratio with the, which give us more directed properties. And finally, you, can, you saw the shape I have been used in the front side of the antenna, which was use, helping me to getting the higher bandwidth. Hopefully, if we can do the optimization on changing all gaps, hopefully I'll get more bandwidth uh, for uh, this antenna and the SAR value and the other uh, parameters was under investigated and it was all uh, under the uh, regulations so far. That's all about me. Thank you all of you. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Mr. Nambi, and Any questions? So uh, when uh, we also fabricate a uh, similar uh, human body quantum, so that is a uh, application different. However, after fabrication, we measure the constant. So if shown and if shown the uh, other part of the other part by measure. So uh, in this case, uh, we measure 
For thank you, Professor Mother, for the questions. For us, uh, so far, what we did, we did uh, we just uh, designed the antenna and we got the impedance matching layer. We attached with the matching layer with the antenna and we placed into the on my head. That's what so far I did as a getting. If you say the uh, proper prototyping, we couldn't do the that yet. For that, I think we need more time. And if we can make the realistic at Phantom, then maybe we can apply that. Then I can do the further this kind of measurement, hopefully, in future. OK, if we would like to measure the constant, we have a measurement pro. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, good to know that. Yes, I already informed about the dielectric cost measurement pro there. But I was seeking uh, that partner for a long time from the UTM. But unfortunately, I think that uh, somehow it was busy, so I couldn't get it. So later on, we went to UITM with Dr. Huda. We did the measurement from there. Hopefully, in future, I'll come to UTM. OK, thank you, Professor. Yeah, so uh, we have another reminder. For all of presenters, you will be given 10 minutes to present your research, one minute for presentation, seven to present, and two minutes for QIT. Next, I would like to invite our next student representative, Mr. Muhammad Faru al Gifari from UTM. He will be presenting his research on comparison of multi view characteristics of positive and negative refractive index lens antenna. Supervised by Dr. Camilla Kamardi and Professor Yoshihiki Yamada. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Farouk Ali um, uh, from Master UTM with my supervisor uh, Dr. Kamilia Kamardin and Professor Shidi Yamada and my co-worker Izni, Dr. Izni Husna Idris and Dr. Musin. Today I would like to present a topic about a comparison of multi-beam uh, characteristic of positive and negative refractive index line antenna. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, can everyone hear me? Hello, uh, Faru. We can. Couldn't hear your voice. Please me. Uh, hello. Can you hear my first name now? Uh, okay, far we can finish that. Ah, okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry for the uh, difficulties. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so uh, I might want to restart this. Uh, so hello everyone, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon. Uh, my name is Muhammad Farouk al Gifari. Uh, with my supervisor, Dr. Camilia Kamardin and Prof. Yoshide Yamada and my coworker, Isni, Dr. Isni Husna Idris and Dr. Musin. Uh, I would like to present a today topic about comparison of multi-beam characteristic of positive and negative refractive index lens antenna. So for uh, the today outline, uh, there's first is the general introductions and then followed by the focal region, uh, sorry, focal region analysis for positive lens and its concentration and radiation pattern. And then after that, we have the focal region analysis for negative lens and its uh, concentration as well. And uh, there's also a comparison between two lens antenna. And lastly, it will be conclusions. So uh, to begin with, uh, in the current 5G mobile technology, 
uh, multi beam uh, radiation pattern is actually needed to achieve a massive MIMO operation. So it is expected that a dielectric lens uh, antenna uh, to achieve an excellent output uh, with an Abyssin uh, conditions lens this, uh, within this big lens. So our current focus right now for today is to create a thinner lens, this lens, the red one, by implementing a negative refractive index, uh, which is expected to improve the multi-beam radiation characteristic in a wide angle region. Okay, so here is the focal region concentrations and multi-beam shape of the Reiki lens. Basically, this is the process. Uh, of how to achieve the how to get the how to obtain the multi beam shape. Uh, the focal region is actually achieved in this image, uh, in this left image, and then uh, by using a MATLAB program. Uh, so at first, uh, the plane wave is coming from the incident ray. By then, we can get the focal region and the caust caustic point. Uh, from in the caustic point. Uh, the ray concentration is, is actually accumulated and then by then we can put our horn uh, fit antenna into one of the caustic point uh, thus we can get the multi-beam shape it is to be noted that a good ray concentration is actually needed to produce an excellent multi-beam radiation pattern so in here is the multi-beam radiation pattern of a dielectric lens antenna. In the first column, there's a lens shape. And in the second one, there is uh, results for the focal region ray tracings. Uh, starting by the three fundamental types, there's a hyperbolic planar with a hyperbolic sites on the left and the planar, planar, sites, uh, planar on the uh, right sides. The results of the focal ray tracings is actually quite good. And then followed by the plano convex. Uh, it's plano on the left sides and convex on the right sides. The uh, results of the ray tracing is starting to become uh, less good. And then there's a spherical convex, uh, which is spherical on the left sides and the convex on the right sides. Uh, and the results of this is not quite good. And then lastly, we have the absence, the absence conditions, where the focal region ray tracing results is actually far more better compared to the tree of the lens shape. Here is the best fit position results uh, for each of the lens type. And here we can see the A is the hyperbolic planars, and then B, uh, the green line, is the planar convex, which is not quite uh, different from the absence conditions. And then there is a spherical convex in the C lines, and then uh, D lines is the absence conditions. After we compile this, we can get the, after we done the FACO simulator, uh, we get the radiation pattern results in here. And as we can see that in the Abyssin's conditions, it has uh, better uh, stable gain compared to the tree of the uh, fundamental types uh, lens. That's for the gain. Uh, okay, so here is the equations to design the A type which is the hyperbolic planner. Uh, it is stated that the F is the length between the feet and the lens, while the N is the refractive index. So for the positive one, we use the N is bigger than zero, and negative one, uh, we use N is less than zero. Here is the parameters uh, uh, to design the length shape. The only difference here is uh, in the refractive index. And here we can see that the positive one is using the square two and the negative one is using negative square two. Uh, it is also can be proven that by implementing negative two, negative square two in this uh, lens, it creates a thinner lens compared to the positive one. So here is also a process to obtain a multi-beam radiation pattern uh, but this time it's through the dielectric lens. The process itself is quite similar to the uh, positive lens, uh, starting from the incident rays and then the ray accumulated in the caustic points and then we put the fit horn antenna and then we'll get the, uh, the results, the multi-beam results. But this time instead we change, we have several modifications and we change the uh, refractive index value the n into negative 
Thus, we can get an, a better and an excellent multi-beam uh, radiation pattern results. Here we can see the results of the focal region ray tracings between the positive and negative lens. Uh, at zero, both lens has a good ray concentrations. But starting from the starting from 10 degree, uh, the ray is starting to diverge for the posit uh, positive lens. Until 30, it's becoming more and more and more diverge. While on the negative lens, uh, the cons the ray concentrations is uh, maintained uh, very well until 30 degrees. And here is the best fit positions for each lens. We can see that the negative lens has a clean uh, best fit positions to create the multi-beams, while the positive one, uh, the best fit positions is quite scattered all around the places. It is, uh, uh, and we can say that these uh, negative lens is far more applicable to be implemented in the real life situations instead of the positive one. Lastly, we have the comparisons of dielectric and negative refractive index lens antenna. Here we can see the parameters of each lens and then the lens shape and then the results of the multi-beam. The negative refractive index actually has a better and stable uh, and consistent as well for the gain compared to the positive one. So it can be said that it is safe to say that the negative refractive index is actually has a better multi-beam results compared to the positive one. So as for the conclusions, the lens shape and best fit positions at positive and negative refractive index lens are investigated. The negative refractive index lens achieved thin, thin lens shapes and sharp reconcentrations at the focal region compared to the positive refractive index lens. And then different best fit positions are shown for negative and positive refractive index lens. Lastly, good multi-beam radiation pattern can be achieved by negative refraction, refractive index lens. Uh, here is the references for the present, this presentations, I think. And that's all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Farrell. Any questions for the floor? Okay. Moving forward, our next speaker is Ms. Hmm? Uh, hold on. Sorry. Ms. Tania, are you there? Yes, Okay, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum and good afternoon everyone. I am Sadia Fruz. Today I will be presenting our ongoing research project, our rebel wide band antipodal vivalti antenna for 5G application. And my supervisor is Asrimi Abdullah Al Hadi and uh, my co supervisor is Saidatul Nulaina Azimi. And our project is uh, associated with Jabil Industries. So for uh, presentation outline, we'll start with the introduction. So for nowadays, we know that uh, body area network are being used a lot nowadays because of multiple application like health, sports, monitoring, emergency search and rescue. And because of all of these, uh, and what is the uh, where horrible antenna is considered as the body area network, the heart of the body area network. So as a result, horrible antenna are now in focus of a lot of researches. 
and beside for the cellular technology 5g is considered the most advanced in terms of higher data rate large bandwidth uh, improved security features better resolution compared to the previous existed technologies. And uh, for that, for the 5G technology, the 3GPP has released uh, multiple frequencies, uh, which are known as 5G inner band. So for 5G inner band, there are usually two types of frequencies. One is FR1 and FR2. So FR1 are the frequencies that are under sub 6 gigahertz, under 6 gigahertz, and another one is millimeter wave. For our research project, we have uh, concentrated on sub 6 gigahertz frequencies. So if we want to cover all these frequencies, so it, the antenna needs to be a wideband antenna. So in research, uh, in present research, we have found different type of wideband antenna. So one of them is VLD type of antenna. Because of its structure, usually VLD antenna provides higher bandwidth. So because of that, since our focus is to design a wideband antenna, we plan to design a antibody VLD antenna. And since this will be a wearable antenna, the antenna material, uh, the substrate should be something flexible. So for flexible, we decide to go for the textile material. So for that, we used a textile polyester material. For uh, But only polyester material was fl flexible enough, but it was not very stable and durable or not very convenient for the industrial uses. So because of that, we considered using a TPU layer over the polyester. So considering all these, the final substrate will be a combination of TPU and the polyester. So now we'll move toward the antenna design. So this is our design. So at first, it were, we started with a very conventional uh, antipodal Vivaldi antenna, and then we did some modifications. And from here, we can see the antenna specifications for uh, two substrate, polyester and both TPU. And uh, here we can also see the parameter values and uh, parameter and their values. So now we will discuss about the fabrication. So this is that we also managed to fabricate our prototype. So here we can see the prototype, uh, both simulated and fabricated antenna. And we have also done measurement. So we can see also the measurement setup. So for antenna fabrication, actually antenna fabrication wasn't done manually. It was done in Javel Industries. So for that procedure, it was done using screen printing technique. So, but in the beginning, the TPU substrate was pre-laminated into the polyester using a heat press laminator. Afterward, uh, the antipodal antenna is screen printed with multiple stack up layer on the substrate and we can see the pro whole procedure here uh, the silver ink is used as the conductor uh, as the conductive matri material and uh, the conductive layer both conductive layer the ground and the patch uh, they use the um, screen printed silver ink it was using a 233 inch meshes with 30 micrometer emulsion thickness and the whole procedure was done in Java industry so now we will move toward the result and the discussions so here we did uh, we managed to do the uh, measurement and here we can see that the simulation and the measurement result both are quite compatible. And beside that, our target was to cover the frequencies, uh, the sub gigahertz 5G frequencies. So from here, we can see it, the antenna is showing a very wide band and it is able to cover all the frequencies uh, over one gigahertz, which are considered as 5G sub gigahertz frequencies. But since this is a wearable antenna, so another uh, important thing is that the antenna need to operate perfectly uh, when the antenna is placed on body. So for that, we also did the on body measurement. And here we can see the setup for the on body measurement. 
and uh, this is the on-body measurement performance. So from on-body measurement performance, we can also conclude that the antenna is resonating efficiently, and it is also covering the sub gigahertz frequencies. And beside that, the simulated and measurement results are also quite compatible. And these are the efficiency and gain performance, which we have done in simulation only for now. Uh, and the efficiency and gain are quite um, uh, satisfactory from here, we can see. Now we will conclude the work. So here we proposed a variable antipodal Vivaldi antenna for 5G sub gigahertz frequencies. And the proposed antenna call for uh, the resonance bandwidth that is within the sub gigahertz 5G band, except under 1 gigahertz. And the compatibility has also observed between the simulation and the measurement. But uh, since this is an ongoing project, so the bending analysis, the radiation pattern analysis, and the gain and efficiency till now, which is did from simulation side, so the measurement of that will also be conducted. And these are the references. Thanks a lot. Is, is there any question regarding the work? Uh, well, yeah. So I want to ask whether you consider the uh, SAR measurement in this project. Sorry? Uh, SAR measurement. Uh, Specific absorption rate, SAR. Yeah, yeah, SAR would analysis we will also consider. Mm -hmm. we, we will consider or? Um, <laughs> because actually this prototype, the work is still going on. Like uh, I have just presented the Yes, parameter for on body and for free space, but efficiency and gain also. I just presented simulation because this is an ongoing project still. So I'll, afterward, I will also do the measurement for this, the SAR analysis, the bending analysis, and uh, the radiation pattern, and all those uh, measurement will also be done. Okay, okay, not thank you. Okay. Oh. I have a question because this is a body one antenna, right? Uh, so what is the in your simulation or in your on your on the body measurement? What kind of uh, gap? That means how much gap do you uh, observe between the antenna and the body? Okay, so for this one, we uh, this one we did on the T-shirt. But our main objective is this one just to see. So it's like around 3 mm. But for uh, since this is a polyester material, right? So polyester itself is the, uh, it will be a shirt. Entirely the whole thing will be a shirt. So this white material polyester will be a part of the shirt and antenna will be in within the shirt. So later, uh, uh, later we will do the measurement, the putting the antenna just over the body, like on the bare body, on the skin, because this white thing will be the sh part of the shirt, and the whole antenna will be a part of t-shirt, and and the polyester, the white material will be the t-shirt material. Okay, because because from experience on the body one antenna, right? Uh, I've done, I've developed UHF uh, band uh, body one antenna before. And it's actually in use in the field uh, by surgical service in the US. So the question is because antenna, when you say body one, there are a lot of characteristics. One is like you can, it's like a plaster that you stick to your body with maybe a 0 0.5 mm gap or whatever. But then uh, you may want to consider uh, studying it like, you know, zero gap like or 0 0.5. Like normally, if it's, you stick on to body, it's like, 0 0.5 or 0 0.2. That's your your double sided tape. And then by different different so called gap as well, up to maybe a couple of millimeters. Because your I see your frequency is from one to six gig. So your pretty high frequency. Of course, at one gig, your your quarter wave is quite short. Okay, compared to six gig, it's definitely very short. 
So by having different, different gap, right, you will see that your efficiency and the gain will be, that will vary very, very much. It will differ. It will change a lot. So in your measurement or your study, you need to really take that into consideration. Because at the end of the day, if you are using this for real application, they will have to expect the spec. What is the gap? Or else your result will be changing every every now and then. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your suggestion. Actually, from simulation, uh, I did with different distances. But for measurement, we couldn't do it yet. So that's why I didn't present. So I, thanks a lot for your suggestion. I will try to do those analysis also. Thanks a yeah. lot. Because for body one, uh, normally your gap, uh, you can use the so-called something like styrofoam, but then a type of foam, uh, the white foam, which mm -hmm. is like with, air, with yeah. dielectric of almost like air. So that will mm -hmm. give you a more consistent result in your measurement. Yeah, thanks a lot for the suggestion. Next question. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Mohir Din. I'm from UKM. Uh, I have a question related to the spectrum and materials. Uh, here, Otho designed an antenna that is operated over a long spectrum. Uh, as I'm, I'm seeing, uh, the antenna is operating uh, from 1 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz. So I think it should be uh, only fixing in 2.4 gigahertz. And the material uh, here, author is using uh, uh, some, uh, I don't know what's material, but uh, here uh, already there's some material is by provided by Rogers, Rogers uh, 5880. So it is, I suggest to use that material. It is very stable material for, uh, for the, uh, I mean, wearable design. And also author can use some other material like RT6010. So that is very stable. So my question regarding the spectrum, uh, you, you can answer this question. So for the material? Uh, first one is a spectrum. You are, uh, I mean, the antenna should be uh, filtered at the other spectrum, uh, regardless the 2.4 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, we are considering under minus 10 dB. So here we, uh, here we can see from here to here, the whole bandwidth is under minus 10 dB. So that was our main focus to make it white band and uh, make it make the antenna resonance under minus 10 dB. OK. And what's the issue with the material? I think uh, here is uh, some other material you can show in simulation the uh, i mean comparative analysis yeah yes yeah, sure. that's a great uh, suggestion actually for the material uh, since this project is with the industry so they are focusing to make a t-shirt so they want to this white material is the polyester so it will be the whole t-shirt material and a part of the t-shirt will be this antenna so they are really focused with some material like uh, cotton, polyester, or something that people usually wear as a cloth material. So because of that, at first, they suggested the polyester. So that's why we uh, go with the polyester. Later, we have also planned to do the analysis with the cotton and other type of materials. And this TPU actually to make the structure more durable and more stable. So this uh, TPU layer is stuck with this white polyester layer with uh, the heat pressure of uh, the machine. Hope that answered your question. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Anya Afrois, and thank you for all the questions. Thanks, I am delighted to our next presenter, Ms. Liana Shahira Bintiwan Abdul Aziz from IRUM, to discuss her research on 4D radar imaging for target detection and classification using deep learning.
Due to some technical issue, we would like to continue with our next student research presentation that will be presented by Ms. Munira Binti Muhammad Ayaz from UITM. Her research title is Fragmented Configuration Utilizing Binary Genetic Algorithm for UHF, UHF RFID Tech Athena under the guidance of Dr. Suhaila Subahir and Dr. Nurul Huda Abdurrahman. Please welcome. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon. My name is Munira binti Muhammad Alias. I'm from University of Technology Mara. And today I'll be uh, sharing my work entitled Binary Coded Genetic Algorithm Optimization for UHF RFID Tech Antenna. Okay. Oh, stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys do work out with it. I'm sorry due to the technical issues, so I just uh, present it like this. All right, first and foremost, I'll give a brief introduction about uh, what is RFID. So RFID is basically a radio frequency identification system which operates at the ultra high frequency depending on which countries you're in. So in Malaysia, the UHF band is from 919 to 923 megahertz. But in this research work, I'll be proceeding with the frequency band of the US and Canada because the frequency range of Malaysia is already within the respective frequency band. 
So the working principle of the RFID uh, system is basically when the RFID tech antenna uh, entered the electromagnetic signal that was generated by the reader, it will draw power from it. And then the tech antenna will store, uh, the tech antenna which stored the information will transmit uh, the data that was stored in it and transmit it back uh, via the antenna and the reader will uh, accept and receive the uh, stored information and decode the information and transfer it to the computer database. So there are two common types of RFID tech antenna. One is the active, which has its own uh, built-in power source, thus uh, resulting it can go a uh, much longer read distance and longer shell life. The next one is the passive uh, RFID tech antenna, which does not have its own uh, power source, thus resulting in much shorter shell life and read distance. Some of the RFID applications are the logistics, location tracking, inventory management, element tracking, and retail. So in an RFID system, ensuring a high maximum power transfer is uh, crucial because when there is when there is a significant mismatch between the chip impedance and the antenna impedance, the reliability of the RFID system is uh, not so good, meaning it will impact the read distance and the reliability of the overall RFID system. So the bare minimum of the maximum power transfer should be more than or equal to 0 0.8. From the maximum power transfer, we can calculate the maximum read distance using the free free space formula as shown right here. Some of the inherent problems of RFID tech antenna include size constraint because uh, obviously when we're operating at a frequency below one gigahertz, the size of the tech antenna is much bigger as it is uh, inversely proportional to the frequency. So uh, makes it impractical for industry use. Some of the solution to cater this pro problem is to use uh, bindering or capacitive loading. That will result in a degree of gain and weak reach. Some of the other problems are the on-metal application, which causes interference with the RFID signal, which causes the tuning, multi-path effects, and some of the solution uh, is the use of artificial magnetic conductor, which is the EMC, which results in the increase of complexity and high cost. Next, why I decided to use programming to optimize the UHF RFID tech antenna is one, is due to the efficiency. Programming enables the use of an uh, optimization algorithm to systematically explore the design space and find the optimal solution more efficiently compared to the trial and error approach. Secondly, it's due to the complexity and precision because the design of your chef RFID tech antenna is high, can be highly complex and the optimization process often uh, requires fine-tuning of several parameters simultaneously. Thus, programming, uh, using programming allows more control and manipulation of these variables efficiently. And the third reason is because of the trade-off. Obviously, when designing anything, it requires trade-off. So uh, designing RFID tech antenna often uh, involves trade-off between the tech antenna characterization. Using programming allows uh, the designers to explore this trade-off and select the best compromise results based on the specific uh, needs of the application. Some of the optimization methods that are available out there is BGA. GA is basically a genetic algorithm. B stands for binary. So uh, GA genetic algorithm, they can uh, produce uh, results in binary or real coded value. So in my case, I'm using the binary. So it's binary genetic algorithm. BGA mimics the process of natural selection and evolution genetics, whereby uh, the solution that perform better in the problem domain are more likely to be selected and their genetic material uh, will be passed on to the next generation. Next is the ACO, which is the ant colony optimization, which uh, is inspired by the foraging behavior of the ants in search for food. This algorithm relies on the collective, collective intelligence of the ant colony to find the optimal or near optimal to optimization problems. Next one is the PSO, which is the particle swarm optimization, which was inspired by the social behavior of bird flocking. It relies on social learning and cooperation among particles to guide the search towards better solutions. Why I choose binary genetic algorithm is due to robustness, versatility, which uh, this BGA is able to handle various optimizations and optimization problems, and the inclusion of the GA, oper GA operators such as cross over mutation, which allow diversity and exploration of different solutions. 
So right here is the flowchart of the genetic algorithm, starting with uh, defining the cost function. Cost function is where you put all the mathematical equation and then the variables and the GE parameter. Next, it will generate the initial population, which is then is decoded to ensure that the chromosome that we get falls within the solution space. Next, it will uh, undergo the evaluation process before moving forward to the GA parameters right here, which is the selection crossover and mutation before again uh, undergo the evaluation phase. And finally, it will display the best solution in the binary string. So right here is the proposed Yon Chef RV tag antenna. Uh, the chip used is NXPU code 8, which uh, the frequency ranges from 860 to 960, chip sensitivity of negative 23, and impedance of 13 minus J191. The substrate use is Rogers RT Duroid of 580 with a thickness of 1.57 and dielectric constant of 2.2. So right here is the top view, side view, and the front view of the antenna. But firstly, let's get into the binary string. So binary string consists of 1 and 0. 1 denotes conducting material and 0 non-conducting material. So right here, from the binary string, how I transferred, how I designed it to be this uh, tag antenna is, uh, let's look at, take a look at the first column. 11011, conducting, conducting, non-conducting, conducting, conducting. So 11011. So and then afterwards, it follows the same thing. All right, so this is the comparison between with and without the chip footprint. The reason why I include the chip footprint is to uh, ease the fabrication part because uh, I want to refrain myself from using uh, excess use of copper tape because uh, excess use of copper tape will uh, affect the overall tag antenna performance. So right here, with the inclusion of the chip footprint, the tech antenna uh, resonate at 917 megahertz with a maximum power transfer of 0 0.99 and antenna impedance nearly conjugate with the chip impedance of 13 minus J191. So it's shown here. So the beauty of using uh, or implementing the fragmented configuration is that the most sensitive part of the antenna design is the cell itself, the cell size itself. So uh, the cell size for this proposed antenna is uh, is drawn to be in a symmetrical order, meaning that the W the L is equal. So right here, increasing the cell size from 12.3 to 16.3, it shifts the frequency, resonant frequency to much lower frequency, indicating that the tag is more inductive and the maximum power transfer for all the tested value kept stable at more than or equal 85% of maximum power transfer. So for this uh, design, the cell size chosen is 15.3. Next is the surface current distribution and real light skin of the tag antenna right here. So with the inclusion of the cheap uh, footprint, the antenna impedance conjugately match, which gives uh, the a final realized gain of negative 0 0.95 and the calculated read range is at 20.85. So uh, for further enhancement, I further transform from the single element. Single element, the bit sequence of the single elements right here is the same as before. So from single element, transform it into double elements and two quadruple elements. So in double elements, basically it consists of two single elements and for quadruple elements consists of four uh, single elements. So this is uh, the design double elements and the quadruple elements. For the overall results comparison right here, single elements gives the best uh, maximum power transfer at 0 0.99, double elements give the best uh, realized gain of 0 0.61, which uh, the read range is close to 20 meters. And for the quadruple elements, gives the, maxi the best maximum current distribution. The choice of design should be guided by the specific requirements of the application. For example, if the application can accommodate a larger tag and requires longer read range, single or double element can be chosen. Conversely, if uh, the application requires a smaller tag and can work with much shorter read range, quadruple uh, element can be chosen. This emphasizes the importance of holistic approach when designing UHF variability tag antennas, taking into account all relevant factors and constraints. Next is the fabricated and measured tag antenna. Okay, the reason why I chose to fabricate the quadru quadruple elements is because at that time I'm running out of the substrate. 
So a uh, quadruple element gives the smallest overall dimension compared to the other. So I decided to go with the uh, quadruple elements. So the impedance uh, matching, impedance measurement was done using the VNA, Rode and Swartz. And right here is the realized gain and measurement, realized gain measurement and the impedance measurement. It shows good agreement between the simula simulated and the measurement. As for the conclusion, an on metal fragmented RF attack antenna has been designed utilizing the BGA optimization to achieve the conjugate matching with maximum power transfer more than or equal to 0 0.9 can be achieved utilizing this method. Lesser tuning parameters involved. The chip footprint provides additional capacitance and grid agreement is observed between the measured and simulated antenna impedance value. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mayra. Is there any questions from the floor? If there is no question, I would like to invite again our next presenter, Ms. Liana Shahira Binti Wan Abdul Aziz from LLUM, to discuss her research on 4D radar imaging for target detection and classification using deep learning. Supervised by Dr. Farah Nadia Binti Muhammad Issa. Please welcome. So a little bit of background about the study is, uh, or I will say the motivation behind the study would be because of the uh, advancement of radar sensors for autonomous, autonomous vehicle is actually now provided by this new technology, making the automotive radar imaging to be um, in a very high demand in terms of uh, uh, in terms of the adaptive uh, driver assistance system known as ADAS, and for also to increase the safety of the vehicle and as well as the road user. So when the, uh, there is a high demand in the automotive radar imaging, actually the technology to make the radar imaging itself to be um, much higher in terms of accuracy, it, we make the technology nowadays uh, become um, needed in the automotive industry actually. So given by this most technology, it gives two things to the radar which um, um, make the radar to operate in a better, uh, higher level of productivity in terms of the data processing and also give the radar to operate in a low power consumption. So given by these two things make the radar to become um, very uh, open to mass production because right now i can see in most of the vehicles they use automotive radar uh, imaging to help with uh, for example like a uh, blind spot area with a uh, lane change um application in terms of uh, the vehicle itself I will continue the, the sharing. And then, so given by this, the uh, automotive radar imaging system are now using uh, the same technology. Actually, the same technology comes in, in, the, in the shape of a chip. So, using this chip, they actually use multiple chips in one uh, specific radar imaging to actually to um, make the radar to operate in a multiple input and multiple output, which is known as as MIMO uh, system. So given by the MIMO system, it should actually give the radar to operate in a much higher 
uh, uh, resolution. So uh, in an easy way to see this, like the, uh, the radar is actually operating like a camera. So instead of we see uh, a person inside a camera, we also can see a person inside the radar. It's by the difference is the radar we see in, in the shape of a point cloud, which I will show you later on in, in the slide. So um, at, the, at the beginning of this project, there are several problems that I need to uh, able to answer it, which uh, the first thing is the sparsity of the point cloud classification. When we talk about a radar imaging, actually, it gives you the object in the in the image of a point cloud. So when it comes in a term of point cloud, it actually comes with the sparsity. It means here that if we see a person inside the radar imaging, we cannot actually differentiate between the head and also the hands. This come with the problem of the sparsity of the radar, I mean, uh, of the point cloud inside the radar. And then um, the second thing is that when we use a radar in, in detecting objects, actually uh, a higher number of objects inside, of, uh, when we want to capture something inside the radar, it actually a higher number of objects will actually influence the accuracy of the radar itself. So. When I want to use um, radar imaging, the application for this project is actually for the monitoring system. I'm sorry, I should explain about that. So when we have a high accuracy of a radar imaging, we want to study if we can use this radar imaging to actually um, use it in terms of monitoring uh, application, which we will eliminate the use of camera. So um, the accuracy in um, object uh, in multiple object is actually a question that I need to uh, the problem that I need to answer inside this um, project also. And the third one is the capability of the radar itself to actually differentiate between a human and animal. Because when we talk about monitoring system, we want to be able to differentiate the object that it actually presents in one frame, right? So do the radar imaging can actually differentiate it? We can say that we can, but we need to actually uh, fuse it with uh, other sensor that can help the radar to actually improve its accuracy in detecting di differentiate different objects. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this one should be okay. Okay, so what is actually 4D radar imaging? 4D radar imaging, some people will define it as a, a radar that can uh, give you uh, a high information about a target in terms of its range, azimuth, elevation, and Doppler. But for me, I will add a little bit part of what 4D radar imaging would be is that it actually it comes as a high range resolution imaging radar. In terms of high resolution, we mean about the resolution of the radar to actually produce an image about the object in the frame. So um, basically, for the radar imaging, it comes with the FMCW MIMO based radar because from FMCW MIMO based technology, it actually gives the radar imaging a more dense point cloud, a higher detection accuracy, and it improves the angular estimation of the object. So in monitoring system, we actually use three types of sensor in the in the market, and we usually see one is the radar, the lidar, and also the camera. So in terms of object detection, we can say that all of the three sensors can actually detect object. But how about in terms of classification? If we want to replace camera in terms of monitoring system, we need to have the radar to actually classify the, the object because we cannot see in by the point cloud, we can identify if this human is a male or female, but that will not be uh, so significant in terms of monitoring because uh, we actually just want to differentiate like a human and a car, something like that. So um, classification uh, in terms of radar is very bad. So how we want to improve this classification? I come with, um, we come with, I, a method that actually can improve the accuracy is by fusing the data from the radar imaging and also the data from the camera. From the fusion of the data, we actually come up with a point cloud data set 
and we can uh, you we use this data set actually to train a neural network um, that we develop and train the uh, the the neural network to actually identify the point cloud to be car or a person. So in order to do that, we need to actually um, change the we actually need to change how the image of the point cloud to be an image uh, to teach it that in the image is a car because from the point cloud, the, the, the neural network system, we need to teach it whether this is a car or human or something like that because it doesn't know anything about it. Mean, all it knows is taking the data and we need to teach our oh, this point cloud is actually a car or a person and something like that. So um, this is the fit forward neural network that we use in this project. Fit forward neural network is actually a very simple neural network that we can use. It means that it takes the input data and in the hidden layer, it actually the place where they learn about the point cloud and it will give this prediction whether, oh, this is the type of car or a truck or a person. So um, to make things clear about what I see, what the point cloud is actually, I can show you like this person. So basically we have a, an image of a person, right? And then we, you can see that the blue or blue dot, that is actually a point cloud from the radar. That is what the point cloud see. So what the, what the radar see, it doesn't see a true image of a person, but given by its, um, given by it, um, when we project the point cloud onto the image, we can actually extract that, oh, this point cloud is actually um, belong to a human class. So we can teach that to the neural network. So given by that, the, if you see it at the right side, actually the blue dot is now, the blue dot is now is where the neural network already identified, oh, this, point cloud is actually the human. I hope I can zoom in, but to make it more clear for you, but due to this. Uh, and then the, the result for the car, like the red dot one, the neural network already uh, identified that car as a car. So from this uh, neural network, actually, we already can teach the neural network to identify the point cloud belong to which class, and then we can use this neural network to actually integrate with, with the radar to make a um, real-time monitoring system without the help of any camera. Uh, the measurement taken in... No, the, no, the measurement is taken in uh, Canada, actually. So uh, this is like the bus. So in short, uh, what I did here is like, we want to try to replace uh, a monitoring system by being, instead of using a camera, by using the radar, because we know radar has much more potential in terms of monitoring because it can give much more uh, information about the target Islam, like the localization, the Doppler, the, uh, the uh, it have made so many compared to a camera actually. And this is the last one, uh, the result of the performance evaluation by the uh, prediction that the neural network do. So we can see that it actually can predict if the point cloud is actually a person, a car, a bus, or a truck. However, for the bus and the truck, there is some confusion that happened there, but this is uh, this is due to the, um, when we want to extract the data and teach the neural network that the point cloud is that uh, belong to a truck or bus is actually confused between a bus and a truck because the point cloud is almost the same for bus and because of the, the size and also the shape. And actually, uh, and lastly, the accuracy of this um, neural network in identifying the uh, uh, classification is up to 97%. However, this accuracy could be decreased when uh, we teach a much higher um, data into the neural network due to some coefficient that may occur during the training. So the conclusion here is that um, uh, I presented you a method in actually uh, classifying a radar point cloud through the sensor data 
and uh, the algorithm of the neural network actually shows the progression up to 97 percent of accuracy. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lena. We open for Q&A session. Oh, this is the example. Uh, for the hot frequency. 77. 77 megahertz. 77 megahertz. Yeah. So uh, when when I see the compared to a camera and radar, so maybe the uh, reflection noise from the ground is very strong. So uh, you have better to reduce the uh, noise uh, from the reflection from the road. Also, uh, for the automotive for the imaging, actually, they already come with a signal processing that actually come with the CIFAR, the CIFAR, uh, CIFAR algorithm, where it actually, if uh, the ground truth of the object is known to be um, uh, a road, it actually will um, filter out from the data. Already, because the signal processing become, uh, I'm, uh, I can't remember the cipher, I mean the false rate, the false rate alarm something. So from there, from there, the, the radar actually already filter out all the root and noise and clutter. However, uh, this uh, some uh, <coughs> signal processing is okay. However. Uh, by physically, if you more sharp antenna, then you can reduce the factor yeah, uh, mm, noise more lower. Uh, after that, it's more better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but to just to be informed that because this project is actually to study if we can use the automotive radar imaging in terms of monitoring. So we didn't uh, actually develop the radar yet. We just want to study how actually the behavior of an automatic radar image actually to be uh, placed in a somewhere the aesthetic. Yeah, because in a vehicle, behavior, usually uh, the object is usually in dynamic, right? So when it is static, the behavior will be a little bit changed compared to dynamic um, um, things. So we use a ready, uh, ready made radar. Uh, and then in future, maybe we will try to develop another own radar. Thank you, Ms. Yana and Prof. Yamada. Next, on our agenda, I would like to invite our next speaker, Dr. Tawhidul Alam from UKM, that will be sharing his insights on nano satellite antenna design and challenges. Please welcome. Assalamu alaikum and uh, good afternoon everyone. <coughs> this is Dr. Tohidul Alam from University of Kevangsan, Malaysia. Are you hearing me? Hello? Yes. Okay. Uh, today I am uh, going to present <laughs> nano satellite antenna design challenges for lower UHF band uh, satellite missions. Uh, this is the present outline. Okay, all of you uh, know the recent, uh, over last few decades, nano satellite concept, uh, concept became very popular in the research of space research industry, space research and the industry, due to some special facilities like faster, cheaper, better, and smaller uh, facilities of the nano satellite. Uh, it takes less time to build and takes 
less amount of money to build and the size is very smaller and it can be used for educational and uh, commercial purpose and any other specific uh, space missions so there are several types of nano satellite or cube set exist uh, in this nano satellite is very popular among this uh, which is uh, the mass range about 1 to 10 kilogram and the building time is around one year the widely the widely used frequency band of nano satellite is lower uhf band which is 400 to uh, 400 2 to 3 megahertz and USF 3 uh, 435 to 438 megahertz. So we can see from the recent statistics that most of the satellite uh, nano satellite are launched in UHF bands. So uh, in this talk, I will uh, discuss about the research challenge, uh, design challenge of nano satellite antenna for UHF band. Okay, uh, nano satellite mission failure rate. According to the NASA small satellite mission failure statistics, about 42.6% of the small satellites are uh, partially or fully failed. In most of the case, antenna and communication system failure is the major issues, along with the uh, power system failure. So now moves to nano satellite antenna. Antenna is the most important element to establish communication between and the satellite. Uh, so sorry, for uh, I think we think I think we cannot see your slide moving. We start at the third slide. Is it correct? Are you not showing? Uh, only for third slide. Is it not moving or still in the picture? Uh, okay. Now showing? Uh, yes. Maybe present. Okay. Never mind. I will present without presenting mood. Okay. So, uh, designing nano satellite is very, uh, antenna is very crucial for uh, satellite com established communication between art and uh, CubeSat or nano satellite. So, some specific criteria should be maintained. First of all, it should be easily constructive and inexpensive. The next one is small footprint, which is very uh, important or crucial because uh, the antenna should share the space with solar cell. And their relation is uh, inverse relation because if we want to place an antenna in the satellite body, then the space for the solar placement will be reduced. So the ratio should be maintained because we have to maintain the sufficient power to uh, su sufficient power for the uh, satellite mission operation. So, so next one should not uh, dominate satellite profile or weight budget. And it should be uh, well impedance matched to save power and maximize power transfer. OK, the t key challenges of uh, nano satellite and nano designs it should be high reliable mechanically robust compact efficient and cost effective effective space quality material so if we we have we have to ensure the material that complies the space grid space and uh, standards uh, and also we need to consider the nano satellite structure during the antenna design uh, another important thing is mutual coupling with metallic structure okay another design challenge <clears throat> okay uh, most of the case now uh, deployment antennas are widely used for a small satellite antenna but it have uh, several failure incidents like 
exocube compass one and so much uh, recent satellite also failed due to uh, deployment complexity and another alternate solution is a pass antenna but uh, there is a limitation that means for uhf band antenna should be uh, larger usually so if you want to uh, minimize the antenna size we have to design with uh, partial ground uh, uh, with partial ground plan but in that case there is a uh, chance to frequency shifting due to non infinite ground plane and it also affect the metallic structure body so we have to uh, take note all these constraints in designing a lower uhf band nano satellite antenna so uh, considering these challenges uh, in this talk, I will uh, show one possible solution, which is a uh, pipa antenna. Are you showing the slide? Hello, are you showing this slide? Yes, yes, you can see. Okay, thank you. Okay, here, uh, embedded F antenna concept we used to address the overall uh, UHF design con uh, antenna design constraint. Here, we use uh, UHF uh, inverse if antenna, where we cut out two portions who to ensure uh, solar uh, to ensure the light penetration to the solar in in this case uh, we can place solar panel behind the and uh, satellite body and the uh, uh, behind the antenna and between the antenna and the satellite body uh, we can clearly see from this figure so by utilizing this concept we can uh, establish com stable communication and we can provide sufficient power for the solar uh, solar cell to provide sufficient power to the satellite. For this, uh, I have investigated some parameters. That is, uh, one is width, another one is the uh, slit or slot. Uh, <clears throat> from this, we can see uh, the variation of the with the parameter g, the length g, and also overall the uh, respective uh, total efficiency with this parameter. And most of <coughs> uh, more interesting things, we can tune uh, the antenna with the length of the g from uh, lower to higher frequency band. So it it also give advantage to then make the antenna tunability. That means we can adjust the antenna after adjusting with the satellite structure. And here also I also investigated <clears throat> the performance of the antenna for different height. That is the <clears throat> height of the pipa antenna between uh, space between the satellite body and the antenna. It is very crucial because uh, the standard don't allow us to uh, maintain the gap larger if we use larger gap then we can see we can achieve higher efficiency but the standard doesn't allow us it more than five millimeter so here are some results also uh, this is <clears throat> the antenna mounted with the small satellite structure this is one u satellite structure this is for two u satellite structure uh, to comply the structure with the nano satellite uh, we have to do vibration test to demonstrate the ability of the satellite antenna system to the qualification requirement under vibration condition uh, during the launch time so you have to maintain 
the regulations that's why we did a uh, vibration test and after that we checked the solar solar cells performance and another an performance normal functions occur during the vibration test and the antenna was in exact position it was before so this is the brief summary within the short times of 10 minutes thank you <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Zahidu Anand. Is there any questions from the floor? If there is no question, moving forward to our next presenter. Let us present for today, Ms. Siti Zainab Intimama Kamsa from IIUM. She will be presenting her research on design of dual linearly polarized antenna using the NN for print steering applications. This significant research is supervised by Dr. Noor Mufadika Abdulmani, Dr. Sarah Yasmin Nati Muhammad, and Dr. Farah Nadia Binti Muhammad. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I believe we have a short time and we're already in a large time, so I will take I will try my best to make it short and as fast as I can. So this is my research title, Design of Loop Linear Polarized Array Antenna Using Deep Neural Network for Beam Steering Applications. So this is my outline. Uh, it's an introduction, problem statement, research objectives, research methodology, and early findings. Uh, as we can see that uh, 5G is significantly benefit to our daily lives such as education, transportation and many more. And the most common advantage of 5G wireless uh, is that it can reduce latency by millimeter seconds, increase data speed transfer by 10 gigabit per seconds, and can support connectivity with 10 to 100 times with the concurrent devices. And polarization diversity is uh, another technique to enhance the performance of communication systems. And it has become a research interest amongst the research. And multi-beam antenna arrays with directive beams and wide angular carriage are promising candidates for millimeter waves frequency. Therefore, keeping this limitation, uh, however, all this design uh, all the past design are uh, complicated and difficult to manufacture. Hence, keeping these limitations, uh, we propose a slanted uh, positive negative 45 degree dual polarized antenna operating at 28 gigahertz. It's compact and simple antenna uh, distinguish it from fierce antenna and it needs only single feeding port for source excitations and to assign a uh, dual polarize simultaneously and for the ai is the overarching system uh, machine learning is a subset of ai and deep learning is a subfield of machine learning and neural network can make up the backbone of deep learning algorithms so my problem statement is that for the millimeter wave antenna we need height gain antenna to attenuate height free space path loss. And this height gain antenna has low bandwidth and it can cause multi-path components of millimeter waves to be limited. Therefore, this beam steering capability of array antenna will be helpful to overcome this issue. And with the addition of dual polarization feature into the face array antenna will enhance the angular coverage of this main beam radiation pattern. And we come to the research objective of my research is that uh, to design a single element of dual plus antenna and its array antenna at 28 gigahertz and to synthesize dual polarized array antenna using AEP, active element pattern and deep neural network for beam steering capability, which is the second objective is uh, my aim of study. And the last one is to ver verify the performance of fabricated single and array antenna. For the research methodology, it's divided basically into two parts. The first part is the simulation and the fabricated antenna. For the simulation, I'm using the CST simulation tools. 
using I'm using the Rogers RT580 materials with the direct constant 2.2 and the loss tangent 0 0.009. All the previous uh, patch antenna it require a complex architecture in this world. It only needs a single layer, and it uh, implement dual polarization feature to improve uh, the angular white coverage and the objective of the study is to determine whether a neural network algorithm can direct the main beam of dual polarized antenna to the desired location. So it is critical to have a directive beams. This is for array antenna and it's the dimension for the whole antenna. So you can see that from the left figure is a array antenna with the large dimension 70 times 280 and I improved the array antenna into much smaller distance in the element distance which is uh, 20 times uh, 62 millimeter. This is my uh, fabricated antenna I'm using the Rogers uh, 5880 and uh, I have tried using uh, manual uh, drilling for the etching process however I find it I found it difficult due to the smaller dimension that might cause a uh, short circuit. Uh, the transmission line is between 0.2 millimeter until 0.6 millimeter. Therefore, uh, I uh, I sent the, uh, the the material into the manufacturing company for the fabrication process. For the return loss measurement, uh, I'm measuring the single antenna and its dual polarized antenna at a uh, antenna laboratory at uh, Changde University, Taiwan using VNE. And for the array antenna, four ports I measure it at antenna laboratory at entry with the MKL. And for the radiation pattern measurement, I'm using the OTA measurements at, at uh, Changde University. And for the array antenna, I measure at uh, RF station in here, Malaysia. Uh, as as uh, as as far as I know, that uh, there are not many uh, man, uh, machines or tools that can measure uh, four or multiple ports simultaneously. So I found at uh, RF station they have this uh, beamformer, built-in beamformer, that can assign source simultaneously for the multiple ports. So it's my uh, early finding for the simulation results. As you can see that return loss is uh, performed well with the larger than negative 10 decibels. And its skin is uh, quite well with uh, four until uh, eight uh, decibels. And it's for major results, I assume. It's, uh, it's refreshing coefficient return loss is performed well too. And its gain is between the 4 and 8 decibels. Our primary focus is on the array antenna on the right one. This is for uh, some of my findings for the azimuth pattern. As you can see that uh, the, left, the left is for the positive 45 slanted and negative 45 in the right one. You can see that the simulation once uh, the orange graph is having uh, like a diverge signals. It, it indicates that there are two polarizations, means the dual polarizations, and the uh, mismatch, uh, the, sum, uh, the small error between the simulation and measurement is, might be possibly due to the human error because I need to put antenna manually on top of antenna holder to ensure that the antenna is placed in a correct position in a normal pane. This is for the uh, dual price antenna. Uh, the simulation and the measurement is quite uh, match. And this is for the array antenna. As you can see that the left one is uh, array antenna with the larger inter-element spacing. And uh, the radiation pattern shows that uh, there are no directive beams. There are no clear view of main beams. Therefore, I, an, I improved the array antenna into shorter inter-element inter spacing of 0 0.5 lambda. Hence, I get the uh, directive main beams. This improved array antenna is uh, critical in order for 
investigate its beam steering capability using deep neural network later. So I will move to the second part is a pattern synthesis. Uh, actually, pattern synthesis is the vice versa of the antenna analysis where we put the radiation pattern uh, into the deep neural network architecture and the learning algorithm will train the network and predict its output, which is amplitude and phase. And beam steering is actually the changing for uh, main beams or direction into the desired locations and it depends on the uh, array configurations in this study it is a linear characteristic so there is a phase shift in a progressive phase shift controlled by the uh, deep neural network algorithm so uh, before i proceed with the deep neural network how basically I uh, calculate the value for uh, radiation pattern is I'm using the active element pattern, AEP base. So the AEP is basically the product of, um, uh, AEP is the uh, considered as um, one element from array must be cited while the other elements are terminated with matching lots and the uh, fulfill um, Total electric field is uh, actually is the product of AEP times uh, area factor. So this is actually the uh, the basic project for my deep neural network um, methodology. So first, I collect the data and I preprocessing the data, and then I modeling, training, and validating uh, the network. And lastly, is the testing network. This is basically the five basic steps for data collection and pre-processing data. Data collection is means that I acquire the input radiation pattern from the CAST with the uh, amplitude fixed at one and fixed at uh, zero. And pre-processing data means that I normalize the input radiation into the scalar value from zero to one. And for the training data uh, and validation data, both are Fits at uh, both its amplitude is fixed at one, and the phase input is must be different from each other. For the training data, phase input is uh, range between zero and three hundred sixty, with a step size of twenty. Means that uh, each port have nineteen cases, nineteen nineteen angles, time three ports. So the total six thousand and eight five hundred input times seventy two samples, and the port four is fixed at zero as a reference port. While the validation data phase input is 10, 50, 19, and 120, which is a three cases, and the total input is 64 times 72. So, all this training and validation data in Excel file is input into the uh, DNN architecture, is called modeling network. And before that, I must pre processing data, which is normalized data, input into the C input into the architecture. You can see they are consist of five uh, layers, one input layer and three hidden layers and one output layer. I'm using the sequence input layer as the input and ReLU as an activation function and regression, regression layer as the output. Uh, the total input is basically 72 samples and the output is eight, consists of real and imaginary value in a scalar form and this uh, architecture will uh, train the network and produce the predicted amplitude and phase. So this is basically uh, how uh, the code for my modeling training and validating network. Uh, I'm using the Adam Automizer and the uh, boot-in function predict is to produce the predicted amplitude and phase and RMSE is to compare the accuracy of the predicted outputs to the truth value. And for the testing network, later I'm using the same code, just change the S, X and Y variable input with the desire and optimal amplitude and phase. And uh, then the predicted output will be compared with the CST. So this is my early findings. Uh, before I get the prediction, I must comp I must verify the AEP best method with the CST to see that if the AEP best method is reliable. 
for the dead in. So as you can see that uh, the AEP and CST is quite well matched and the maximum uh, beam is matched at zero degree. So this is my uh, desired input angle at uh, 10 theta, 10 degree. Yeah, I have uh, done the prediction output yet as I need to double check of boolean function throughout the coding. But later, I just need to input the optimal amplitude and phase and compare with the prediction outputs with the CST. And I think uh, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. So again, thank you so much for all the presenters. Brothers and sisters, after the N90 presentations, we have the honor of inviting the advisor of our AP technical meeting today, Professor Dr. Yashin Hidi Yamada, to deliver his closing remarks. Uh, thank you very much for inviting speakers, uh, the professor, uh, and Rafi. And uh, fortunately, today we invite uh, propagation side. Uh, this uh, meeting is uh, aiming to enhance the good relationship, research and so on, then and propagation. So, uh, we expect uh, from propagation side many researchers attend uh, this uh, meeting. Please uh, help <laughs> from, uh, to uh, uh, send some propagation members here. And uh, uh, today, uh, Doctor. <clears throat> Uh, Moran, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for good uh, preparation and good accommodation. Thank you very much. And uh, more thanks for many, this time, many uh, student presentation we received. So, good uh, presentation. So, I expect you can uh, develop your researches from now. So, uh, we can, our member will help you. So, if you have some <coughs> questions, our researchers are waiting uh, to <laughs> contribute to the. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, as a final, uh, we, this AP technical meeting is organizing also international conference. So, that will be held in August. 26 to 28 have been out. The leaflet is already uh, completed. So you please uh, ring and uh, we expect to join this uh, new international uh, conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Yashinidi, for the inspiring speech. Brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we have come to the end of our event today. We would like to express our sincere gratitude for your cooperation and apologize for during the program. All guests and participants are invited to enjoy lunch provided at the banquet hall. With that, let us close our event today with Mr. Razor Ice and Ms. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.